the court has no option but to encourage reconciliation as envisaged in the constitution. The political space continues to have new entrants every other day, with the new entrant being the Democratic Action Party of Kenya. The party led by Kandui MP of Fulwa Munini seeks to fill its candidate for other positions but that of the president, they say as DAP, that will be supporting ODM party leader Raila Odinga's presidential ambitions. Defense CS Junomala says the aim of the party is to bring Western leaders together for next year's elections in partnership with ODM leader Raila Odinga through his Azimula Umoja movement. Leo nimefurahi sana ya kwamba tumeanza safari tena. Tumeanza safari tena. And the journey we want to take is a journey of national unity. Kukataa siasa itakayo tugawanyisha kwenye misingi ya kikabila ama ya kidini. Kukataa siasa itakayo tugawanyisha kwenye misingi ya wale walio maskini na matajiri. Kukataa siasa takayo tugawanyisha kusema hawa ni wa mulima na wale ni wa majini kule. Nimesikia hapa mkitangaza wazi ya kwamba mmepeana uongozi wa chama hiki ruksa ya kuenda wa angalie na wasemezane na vyama vingine katika mungano wa azimio. Hiyo ni kweli? DAP, which has its roots in Western Kenya, aims to end the control of ANC and Ford Kenya has in the region, with analysts saying the party's formation would further divide the votes from Western region. Now, Deputy President William Ruto has continued to accuse his political competitors of using government institutions to seize control of the country. Ruto also lashed out at the opposition, saying they have no development agenda. Speaking at his home in Karen, Nairobi, Ruto said a large number of Kenyans had realized the importance of electing leaders with an agenda that will benefit them. Na mimi nawauliza wale tunashindana na wao tafadhalini tafuteni sera. Pangeni sera yenu pelekeni kwa wananchi. Wachana na ESCC, wachana na DCI, wapigane na ufisadi na wapigane na uhalifu ndio tuweze kupeleka taifa letu mbele. Tuondoe vita ya ufisadi na uhalifu kutoka kwa siasa. Siasa ifanywe na sera na hiyo ndio msimamo wetu. Ruto also condemned the formation of regional parties he says are tribal parties for the calling the charge to work with the government in order to achieve the much needed development. Tutatafuta uhusiano kikamilifu kati ya serikali na kanisa. You know so that the state can support the religious community kwa sababu ile kazi dini inafanya katika taifa letu la Kenya ni kazi kubwa na ni kazi ambayo sio ya kibinafsi ni kazi ambayo inaleta wa Kenya pamoja and police team manager George Mailo says he is satisfied with the progress his side has shown since the resumption of the Kenya Premier League. Police lost 0-2 to Mailo's former side Sofa Paka after the break before bouncing back to beat Kariwa Bangi Sharks 3-1, then drew 1-1 with Wazir FC. This is Newswire. I'm Dennis Aseto. If I'm found guilty, there is no problem I'm willing to serve. I have no problem. Jails are meant for human beings. They say a society gets the leadership it deserves. Mm. If you have a corrupt, crooked and rotten society like we have in Kenya, then of course they will get that kind of a leadership. I think the president should dissolve parliament. That's the best solution at this moment in time. Dissolve parliament. All of you go home. Yes, we all go home. How are we encouraging other people who might have new and creative ideas Young people who are making money without any government help. They are just buying their own bundles. They are going on TikTok and making money. KRA is coming after them. Mm. I've been in parliament for 15 years. We have been unable to pass the gender law. And yet no presidential candidate is talking about it now. Because we are fake. The truth is all the men refuse to vote for that law. What did Sonko do to Pumwani from Maternity Hospital? Yeah, he with cleaned his it own up. money. Cleaned it with his own, own money. money. That was him as an individual. Yeah. Uh -huh. And I did not say he was cleaning his own money. I was saying he was cleaning. He cleaned. His <laughs> Foot, mouth. Foot, mouth. Eric. <laughs> okay. The Situation Room, Kenya's biggest conversation.
Spice FM. Nieri. It's the middle of the week, and what do we have on the roads? Not much at this point in time. It looks pretty good on the thicker superhighway getting into the city. Doesn't look like we're going to have much drama, at least for the next uh, 30 minutes or so. All right, what's happening on the Eastern Bypass right there at the AP Training College? It seems to be a bit of traffic. Uh, folks trying to get out then to out um, from Altering towards the other part of the city. It's building up in Westlands as well. And we're also seeing some traffic coming out on Juja Road into the city via Jogo Road. But nothing too crazy at the moment. How about we keep an eye on things and see what develops over the next half hour? Be sure to let us know what's happening in your neck of the woods. Spice FMKE on Twitter. Text us on 40127. Let's get Wednesday started off right. Broadcasting worldwide. Spice FM. This is The Situation Room, the home of hard-hitting political commentary and penetrating insights about the state of the nation. This is a talk radio experience like no other. The Situation Room, a place for hard truths, debates, and elevated conversations. The Situation Room, witty, political, engaging, deep, controversial. In the room, we have C.T. Muga, researcher, academic, seasoned political observer, a fountain of wisdom in these politically uncertain times. Ndu Oko, Nigerian by birth, Kenyan by choice, communications expert, pan-Africanist, a truth seeker and believer in people power, and Eric Latin, agent provocateur, the man in the chair, seasoned journalist, news hound, a man who believes in punching up not down. Good morning. This. How are you doing? It's the 15th day of December 2021. Kenya's biggest conversation begins now at nine minutes after six. Welcome. City Muga. Yes, Mr. Eric Latif. Habari yako? Habari yangu ni mzuri sana. Mm. Na habari yako? Habari yangu pia ni mzuri sana. Mari daddy. Mari daddy. Bam bam. Mm. Okay. Jewewe dada. Uh, fine, thank you. Upo. Mm. Nipo. Nipo. Oh, yes, no, no, that's correct. That's voilà. Correct. That's, correct. Mm -hmm. that's correct. Upo Nico, fine, mo. Thank you. Yes. Yehi. <laughs> huh? Upo mo. Tipo <laughs> mo. Well, that is a compound word now. So, April did its thing. Mm. And uh, the fuel prices done. remain the same. Despite a change in landing costs. Yeah, making noise helps. How nice of them. Yes. In a side sana. 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 Welcome to the show, everybody. We'll have several conversations to have today in uh, very many ways, including what's happening around the world and in the country. I can see someone, uh, Chris Amolo says, he's tuned from the Lakeside City. Of Kisumo. Mm -hmm. That is correct. You pronounce it. You fucking pronounce it well. It's Kisumo, not Kisumo. Mm. So mm. why? What does Kisumo mean? Sumo. Mm. Sorry, the word Sumo. Uh -huh. It's um. What is it? Let me describe instead of trying to find a word that means. Mm. You see, a place where you go to receive the best I can is modern terminology food aid. Okay. Probably through butter, but a place where you can go. Let, let's say I've had a bumper crop and you haven't. Mm. You come to me so that I can sumo you. Mm -hmm. Essentially, the understanding is, yes, I will provide you with the assistance you need. But come a time when I, myself, I, a similar situation, I can come to you. Expect so you so it's, it's reciprocal, yes. Y so it's not yes. a market. Well, you make it into a market uh. when in Kisumu, uh. a lot of butter trade took place. It was okay. a central place for butter. Okay. So the concept was then carried on because essentially it was the same principle. Something you didn't have. You brought. You brought something you had so that you could get something you didn't have. Mm. Yes. So the, 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 the principle was retained. Mm. But the, the essence and the, re, the meaning of it is what I have aforementioned. So more. Mm. Okay. Okay. I bet uh, Chris didn't know that. Do you know the, <laughs> in, in, in the Old Testament, eh, uh. when the Israelites had a drought and they went to Egypt, the mm. story of Joseph? Mm. Mm. Now, 
if Egypt had been a little closer, well, it wasn't really that far. It's just by walking, but it was a bit, a bit tricky. Mm. They were going to buy grain, but essentially, if they're your relatives, <coughs> you are going for Kisuma. Kisuma. You are, yes, so that you can be assisted. Yes, you can be... Uh, I rest my case. Bas. Man has understood this thing perfectly. Sawa. Sawa kabisa. We will have a conversation at 8 o'clock about putting a stop to theft of public debt. Now, what is theft of public debt? What does that mean? It means, well, just keep it right here. 8 o'clock, we'll have two guests joining us. Abraham uh, Rugo, who is a country manager for International Budget Partnerships Kenya, and Irene Otieno, who's the national coordinator at the National Taxpayers Association. They'll be telling us what is this thing of theft of public debt. But first, let's talk COVID-19 in numbers. Mutai <laughs> Kagwe. <laughs> Sorry, Kagwe may have been dealt a blow, but just hold on in a minute to mm. let you know that. I just saw something interesting, and in that since COVID made its entry onto the globe, the, first, the top 10 countries that have been hit by... Uh, COVID remained in the top 10, save for um, uh, Spain and Italy that did this dance with Iran and Argentina. Mm. So the top 12 countries with the highest number of COVID-19 have remained in the top 12 ever since December 2019, except for China. So China came in and then I think they're now down there at the bottom of the, of the list. But these 12 countries since December 2019, and then now going towards January, when now a few cases were found in Europe, they've remained in that number, or rather in that space, uh, from the beginning up until now. Mm. I thought that was very interesting. And looking at that, these tw top 12 countries hold about 70% of the world's COVID-19 cases. The remaining 30% is spread through the rest of the 200 and something odd other countries on the globe. And we're talking about the total cases. Total cases. Cases confirmed in a country. Yes. Um, total cases, yes. Not necessarily total deaths. It's not in that order when it comes to death. No, 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 no. It's not in that order when it comes to death. However, we still mm. see that the highest number of deaths are still within these 12 countries, mm. with the United States, um, India, and Brazil taking up the biggest number of those, as well as Mexico. So it's... Within, this, within that top 12, save one country outside of the top 12, that's where you see the highest number of deaths in the world. Mm. All right. The courts have stepped into this. 21st of December is when you would have been told that you cannot access uh, government services had you not taken the COVID-19 uh, jab. So if you've not been vaccinated, what the Ministry of Health was looking at doing was saying, all right, you don't do that, then we're going to stop you from accessing um, government services. Well... Um, the ever-present Anthony Mrima has said, sorry, that's not going to happen. Kenyans who are unvaccinated against COVID-19, they've received a reprieve from the High Court and they've suspended the government's directive that would have barred them from accessing in-person services. This was going to happen. We were just waiting for a when. Somebody, of course, then filed a petition and uh, Anthony Mrima issued the order stopping the government from denying unvaccinated citizens services following a petition by businessman Enoch <coughs> Ora challenging the directive issued by Health Cabinet Secretary um, Mutai Kagwe on the 21st of November. So the quote is, pending the hearing and determination of this suit, an order is issued prohibiting the government, Ministry of Health or any person acting on their behalf from demanding that all Kenyans seeking in-person government services must receive COVID-19 vaccination by December 21st. We'll look into that story a little bit more, but that clearly is now on hold. Okay. Okay. We're live streaming the show on Spice FM KE on YouTube and Facebook and on Twitter. If you are online, say hello. We'll be appreciative of that and we'll say hello back at you. Shortly, we'll be looking at the news of headlines after hearing the day's proverb. Good morning, 16 after 6. This is the Situation Room, the only way to start your day. Spice up your life. 24-7, around the world, non-stop. This is Spice FM. Hello, you've reached the Wish hotline. Your wish is our command. Uh, hello, never make a wish. Eh, hey, unaweza, what do you want to wish for? I wish Nigiondoa Stressia Storage, packaging na shipping to my customers so I can focus more on growing my online business. Bila hizo hassles. Ah, try Sandy. Sandy? Yes, Sandy. 
Sendy. You can download the fulfillment app and begin fulfilling with Sendy today. Always wishing for a solution to manage your operations? Sendy Fulfillment is here to bring your wishes to life. We pick, store, pack and ship your orders to your customers be less stress. Download the Sendy Fulfillment app today. Do more with Sendy. Hello. Hello. Umesikia? Uh, nimesikia nini? Ujasikia habari? <laughs> Hebu acha nikuambie. Kile kimetokea. Hello. 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 Don't wait for hearsay. Dial star 550 star 1 hash to read the standard e-paper from the convenience of your mobile phone for only 20 shillings from your telecom line and stay up to date for a reliable source with over right, so we're looking at uh, partly cloudy conditions in Nairobi this morning and a bit of a sprinkle at 17 degrees highs of 23 and lows of 15 it's mostly cloudy at 16 in Nakuru highs of 25 and lows of 14 it's 16 degrees and cloudy in Nyeri highs of 22 and lows of 14 Eldred is clear at 13 24 will be the high and lows of 13 today partly cloudy conditions in Mombasa at 25 with highs of 31 and we'll see highs of 30 in Malindi where it's partly cloudy currently at 25. Kisumu is clear at 20, highs of 28, and we're looking at clear conditions in Kakamega. We'll go to highs of 29 and lows of 17. Out in Kampala, it's mostly clear at 18. We'll see highs of 27, and 30 will be the high in a rainy Dar es Salaam this morning at 24. Lagos is mostly clear at 27, going to high of 33, likely to rise. And we're looking at clear conditions in Johannesburg at 15, highs of 25. Kinshasa, clear this morning for now at 23, highs of 31 into Wednesday. Beijing, 2 degrees and sunny conditions going into early afternoon. Uh, going into late afternoon, rather. Highs of 5 and lows of minus 4 today will get quite bitingly cold. It's 7 degrees and cloudy in Paris. Highs of 9 and lows of 6. While 12 degrees is what London heralds this morning. Highs of 12 and 12 will be the low. 7 degrees and clear conditions Monday night in New York. Or coming into Wednesday. Tuesday night, rather. Coming into Wednesday, we'll see highs of 12 and lows of 3. Spice FM. Spice up your life. Mature, intelligent talk every morning. Spice up yourself. Mornings done right. 94.4 Spice FM. Six. Roll call. Good morning. That's what Pascal Quena says uh, to the Situation Room. Kennedy Nzuki is tuned in from Atlanta. Good morning here at Kamarok. And that's what Abdir Kadir Abdallah is and says um, he is here with us. Um, Dave Chappelle says, good morning. I wish you would use a Santa Claus hat with African symbolism. John, can you find a Santa with an African batik? <laughs> Santa with African symbolism. Yeah. So instead of the red hat with the white pom pom, I don't know Ankara hat, Ankara pom pom. Nah. I don't know. Santa Claus will not be Santa Claus. Okay. Dream, Mimi. I don't know. I'm thinking of mm. some sort of headband with feathers. Yeah. That will not be Santa. That will be, be Santa. That will be Babu. And Santa is. Santa is this happy old man who's a good one. And old is. And Babu is not a happy old man who's a good Babu you know him. <laughs> Santa is a new person who only comes once in Christmas. Uh-huh. Babu you're here with him every day. Okay. <laughs> Wambo says I listen to Spice FM every morning and you good morning and have a blessed day you too. Okay, Sovereign Christoph says good morning fellow Kenyans either by choice or by birth. <laughs> good morning to you too. You tuned from the east side of Nairobi. Uh, Eric Musungu says Musungu from Mombasa enjoying the show. Eh. Uh-huh. Ed Getonga tuned in from Chaka in Nyeri. Yeah, that's another place I want to go. Mercy Boswani says, so low of you, sir. Uh, Koi Maxella says, tuned in from Kieni in Nyeri County. And uh, Frankie Odor is tuned in from Bamburi this morning. Alex Mbogo in Nyeri, always listening. Thank you for joining us this morning. Karibuni sana. Everybody, welcome and thank you very much for tuning in to Kenya's biggest conversation today. Today's proverb city. Mwenye shoka. Hakosi kuni. Mwenye shoka hakosi kuni. Yes. Translate that, please. I know kuni is firewood, uh-huh. but I don't know what shoka is. Axe. The person who, oh, the person who has an axe 
will not miss miss firewood. Will luck. not. Will always find firewood. We're not, we're not luck. Will not luck firewood. Sisa, voila. Uh. Shocker is axe. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Shocker, it is. <laughs> it can shock you. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. When you're, when you're shocker, hakosi kuni. Yes. Sawa basi. Nisawa in day. An appropriate tool mm. for an appropriate outcome. Mm. Indeed. Be prepared. Yes, indeed. Mm. <coughs> when you are prepared, yeah. uh, you do not encounter these uh, alarming surprises. Okay. Mm. The standard D paper is available online and you can access it for 20 shillings daily. Just log on to www.standardmedia.co.ke, follow the prompts, and you'll be able then to subscribe to the standard D paper. You get access to this standard paper on a daily basis for 20 bob. Let's look at the newspaper headlines. Headline, headline. So, uh, just uh, when you thought uh, DCI Kinoti was free, mm. then boom, a court has issued a warrant of arrest against a Directorate of Criminal Investigations, Director George Kinoti, for failing to turn himself in at committee prison to serve a four month sentence. So, all this time they'll be waiting for him to turn up. Fellow hasn't turned up, right? We thought that he had been given some reprieve, clearly not. By who? See, he had presented the case saying, you know what, you guys, Cecil Miller said, you know, you, you guys, you, you've charged the wrong person. You've brought your complaints against the wrong body. This has really nothing to do with me. Court says, no, forget it. Mm. Contempt of court, we're not going to let this happen. Mm. You come serve four months and then we call it a day. Yeah, but that didn't, the judge had not agreed with Cecil Miller. The judge had not agreed with Cecil Miller. So uh-huh. this thing where we thought he had received some reprieve, it had not happened. High Court Judge, a Deputy Registrar, and Jerry Thuku signed the warrant of arrest directing Inspector General Hillary Mutiambai to arrest and present Kinoti to court to answer to the charge of disobeying the court order, directing that he goes to prison. Whereas the said George Kinoti was charged before the court with contempt of court, you are hereby commanded forthwith to apprehend the said person and to bring him before this court to answer to the same charge. Justice Anthony Mrima on the 26th of November had sentenced Kinoti to four months in jail after the DCI boss failed to return businessman Jimmy Wajigi's firearms despite a court order. The judge then ordered Kinoti to surrender at com- committee a maximum security prison within seven days to begin his sentence. However, Kinoti moved back to court seeking a review of the sentence to grounds rather on grounds that he was wrongfully jailed. He argued that he was not in possession of the firearms. So how can he return them if he's not got them, right? Mm-hmm. This was the question that he was asking. Cecil Miller, on his behalf, submitted that no one was refusing to hand over the guns to Anjigi and that the businessman had sued the wrong party and should insist and should instead approach the firearms licensing board, the body mandated to store firearms by civilians. So, back and forth, back and forth. However, Justice Simrima again dismissed the argument, saying the question of who was in possession of the guns had already been settled. It is a fact that it is the DCI who seized the firearms. And that's what he was dealing with. Not who stored them or who did what. The DCI seized them Mm. under the authority of one George Kinoti. And whether they moved from DCI to the um, FLB doesn't matter. In the absence of such evidence, it means that they are still holding the firearms and he was rightly sued. Kinoti has asked the court to suspend the jail sentence on account that Wajiki has no valid firearm license, another story, but the judge ruled that the issue had also been settled when the court ordered that he revoked his license and that to be reinstated. The judge said there was no new evidence that would make him change his mind on the decision to jail Kinoti. So, command forthwith Mutiambai, bring him. Mm. Let's start and finish this thing. So basically, it's a, the original order by the judge stands. is stands. Mm. You shall present yourself to commit your maximum prison within seven days. If you don't present yourself within seven days, a warrant of arrest shall be issued against you. Deputy Registrar now has issued that So warrant. now the warrant has been issued against him and it stays in force forever, even after. It stays in force. Now that's the thing. Even after DCI cannot, it stops being DCI cannot. It has gotten to that point. Now you can't revoke or repeal this. Bash. Okay. Okay. This one will be interesting to see. 
the IG has been ordered. You have been ordered. You have been ordered Commanded to arrest. Commanded forthwith. Arrest this guy. Sawa. Ni sawa. Page 8 of the standard this morning. When college student Felista Nyamadera Njeroge was receiving 102 million shillings from her foreign partner, her friend's account was also credited with millions of shillings from the same <laughs> man. Remember that story? Remember that? Remember There's that. a Belgian businessman called, uh, what's his name? Uh, Don't worry. Mark de Massel. That is his Mark name. Mark de Massel says, uh, you know, they are partners with Miss Felista Nyamadera Njeroge. And that's why he was sending her money. It was a gift so that they can also raise their family together. And it's for her investment and for her to use mm. the money however she wanted to. Kumbe, Nyamadera has a friend. And Mark de Messel knows the friend. Mm -hmm. And also decides, you know, you, your friends, come one, come all. It's like you go for dinner together. Yes. Okay. On August 10th. Tebi Wambuku Kago is alleged to have received 102.7 million shillings from the Belgian businessman Mark de Massol at her equity bank account. Another 37 million shillings deposited in her account in early November raised suspicion to the source of the money. Yesterday, the asset recovery agency moved to Ms. for Ms. Kago's sudden wealth and obtained orders freezing her two accounts holding 108 million shillings on suspicion that the money was acquired through proceeds of international crime. Mm. Justice Esther Maina also issued the order stopping withdrawal of money for 90 days to allow the ARA file a formal suit for recovery of these funds. Justice Maina also froze Ms. Nyamadera Njeroge's accounts at the Stanbic Bank with 5 million shillings, also alleged to have come from the Belgian businessman. Last month, the court froze her accounts at the Cooperative Bank with 102 million shillings. In the suit filed yesterday, ARA named the two as respondents, claiming that they are engaged in money laundering with some foreign nationals to disguise the source of the money. <coughs> but, um, <laughs> What's the problem? Uh, hmm? What's the problem? I said you can go for dinner with your friend's partner. He pays for both of you. Mm. See, like now, this we say, let's go on vacation. Mm. Bring your friend. This one, now, I'm giving you a gift. I give you I give your friend. Abi? Mm. It's not okay? Mm. Hmm? You know, yeah. the, um, mm. what makes this particular saga yeah. uh, a little intriguing mm. yeah. is because even as this is mentioned, what is equally mentioned is that this Marc de Messel, however you pronounce the name, <laughs> um, Messel. M Messel, has actually forwarded and presented the documentation that facilitated his sending the money. But this is just a mention and it's skipped. There's a certain amount of money that you cannot send. It doesn't matter where you are right now. You must have the documentation. Yes. Yes, yes. And the documentation means wherever you're sending it from, they've okayed and said it is okay. The money can be wired. And by the time it has been wired, that means they have said it's okay. No problem. Yes. No ahala. Go. And before it hits your account, it goes through the central bank of Kenya. It doesn't just sort of like your account boof. Exactly. Mm. No. And they have their wire, you know, terriers. There's their a way. Their ears are up in, and they yes, say, okay, yes, we can yes, allow this money yes, to go yes, through. Yes, yes, no yes, phone yes. call was picked answering questions saying, come on, this money, should we not do something about it? Mm -mm. Let, money was transferred, delivered, deposited Let's in take the, the view that the money just came directly to your account, okay? Mm. The people who raise the alarm are your bank, the receiving bank. Yes. Mm. Okay? Mm -hmm. And they would say, you know, there's this money which has come in and there's A, B, C, D. Now, do you read or hear of a discussion about the documentation and the false steps in that documentation? The answer is no. no. But yeah. that's the flag. The flag is because the bank was doing its job of due diligence. It reported and said, all right, so we have this account has received this kind of money. That's it. That's where the flag starts. The flag starts yes. with money hitting account. Of course, the documentation will say, I mean, it's a gift. No, no, no. If I if I was sending you money and I said it's a gift, there's no way the bank can say no. You cannot send someone a gift of hundred million shillings. That's not your business. The only thing that you do now is report to your authorities that okay, CT has received a gift of hundred million shillings from Eric. Then they leave you. And then the they rest. start looking at okay, so CT just opened this account yesterday. 
CT has received a gift of 100 million shillings. A couple of days later, CT receives another gift of 50 million shillings. What's happening here? What kind of gifting is this? So he said, okay, freeze this account. Let's first of all investigate. And that's what's happening here. Eric, let me ask you this question. Ask me. Um, you explain it well, and I believe that is actually what is happening. Mm. But the problem is this. Mm. We have an entire unit within our system mm. that deals with precisely this. Yes. Meaning they are the experts. Yes. Within it, we have people from DCI. Yes. We have people from uh, the Ministry of Finance. We, we, it's not one person. Mm. They are experts who understand the processes. Yes. If this wasn't Kenya, mm. everything we are saying, I would say it is okay. Mm. Uh, due diligence is being done. Mm. However, this is Kenya. So? Because it is Kenya, uh. a flagging may have absolutely nothing to do with the dubious nature of the origins of this particular money. Why are they disturbing this particular what else like, Why be? have they not been disturbing uh, other people it's, before? It's, it's called arm twisting. But arm twisting and it goes to court. Yes. You it, see, when the ARA is involved, it's no longer arm twisting. Arm I, twisting could have been before ARA is even alerted about it. Actually, arm twisting could have been something else. You see, like what, maybe what Mark de Messel was claiming earlier, that the officers came to his home and they were saying, to okay, so oh, 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 he was, thought he was being harassed. You could say that at the initial stage, that is arm twisting. Mm -mm. But when a matter gets into official records of the central bank, it goes from the official records of the central bank and the asset and recovery agency is roped in. That is no longer arm twisting, oh, actually, my friend. that is at the heart of the arm twisting. That they is, can go as it far as they to want to yes. prove a particular yes. point. Yes. Have you not seen before when sta state machinery, all the armory is used to prove a particular point, either to do that or take your attention from something else, if they want to. You know, if so they arm want twisting to, to what? If, if to they want to scratch something until they get to the bone, ah, they'll use arm everything. Twisting. They'll throw everything plus the kitchen sink. It's called it. extortion, actually. That is the word I was looking for. You see... We are assuming that the process of extortion is a straight line, and I'm saying it isn't. Yeah. It's not a straight line. It's a torturous, circuitous line. And the thing that you will find is also true is that it involves very many individuals, not the units they work for, the individuals within these many units. You will find mm. money, large amounts, coming in. What uh, are you saying, CT? Come on, I'm not seeing where the... the of course you're seeing it. You just want me to I spell am it not. out. Honestly, I'm not. By the time it gets to ARA and it goes to court, Eric. when ARA goes to present a case, it's just like any other of all the other Eric. corruption cases that we've seen. ARA has gone to court and said, freeze so-and-so's account. And the court then goes ahead and says, yes, indeed, forfeit this wealth to the state because the evidence adduced here is that there's some wealth in your account that's unexplained. And the burden is on you to explain Let me ask you this the question, source Eric. of your wealth vis-a-vis -vis your known sources of income. Now, for example, in this particular case, we've seen in the case of uh, there was a former lady uh, who worked with what is the National Land Commission and many others. We've seen ARA goes to court and seeks freezing and the whole game plan for ARA is asset recovery. Right. You see... ARA takes the matter to court. Let me ask the question. If uh, ARA then withdraws the case, what happens? If they say they are satisfied with the information and they are no longer seeking to have the account frozen. I don't know. You tell me. Is there such a case that we've seen? No. I am simply telling you, we uh. never hear of it. We hear of these cases starting. Do we hear how many of them end? They start. They're in the media. Uh. They're in the, we, we hear of them and that's it. You've heard of it. Yes, and we hear them ending. We hear the ones that come to end when they end. Like which one? Like the ones I've just quoted. Eric. There's a lady, there's somebody who... The an end doesn't mean that the money is actually frozen. You're told it no, is frozen. No, an end is the court ordering the recovery of the asset. Yes. The court ordering the forfeiture. There's somebody who lost some apartment yes. blocks. I but don't the, remember their the names. the question I asked was, There's Eric, somebody else who lost money in their account. Do you forfeited ever hear, to the state. Do you ever hear of asset recovery mm. with drawing cases? No, I don't. Precisely. The point I'm making is this. Yeah. If this wasn't Kenya, I wouldn't even raise an issue. I would say processes are being followed. Government agencies are doing their job. But because the issue of money laundering, it ends with asset recovery. But there are many agencies that are involved to the point, when it gets to that point or when it gets to court, other people have been involved in that process. Yes. And I'm saying where there's large amounts of monies involved, it is rarely a simple, straightforward case 
of the investigation taking place and money, the, the, the sources of money being doubted. It rarely is. There's always something to it. That is what I'm saying. Okay. Mm. I don't hear what you're saying, but I accept that you've said something. That is adequate. <laughs> that works too. 23 minutes to 7. This is Kenya's biggest conversation, the Situation Room. Let's take a quick break, take a look at the traffic. We'll be back shortly with other news of headlines. Twenty four seven around the world, non stop. This is Spice FM. What makes a man? I had an advertising job that was toxic. It was difficult. I'm not saying the people were toxic. I don't think anyone is inherently toxic. Don't ever let someone's perception of you become your reality. How do we navigate through career, family, and life? I was, I was an average kid. I, I, I wasn't a poor student. Examining what defines a man. We derive our identity as men based on external factors, on things that people can be able to see. A space for men to open their experiences and more. Starting Thursday, 18th November, on the Standard Digital YouTube and Facebook page. Hosted by Eric Latif. Deep fried, chama, stew, breast, wings, gizzards, thighs, quarter, half, sausages. There's no greater meat than chicken. Knowing the sauce of your chicken, however, is key to truly enjoying your favorite dish. Tune into Sugar and Spice from 11 a.m. with Yolanda Mulua and DJ Absolute to learn more about how Kenchik is cuckoo about food safety, nutrition and taste from farm to family. 24-7, around the world, non-stop. This is Spice FM. This is something people need to understand. Your money, my money, equals our money. We cannot have... Your money is my, our money, mm. and my money is my, my money. money. The only way to live your best life is to create a balance between work, love, and play. The Adults in the Room is the only show on radio dedicated to educating Kenyans on how they can stay winning in life and in love. Text the word ADULT to 22840 to get the Hello. latest clips Hello, what adult. does it look like at about 6.30? Um, right around Makadara on Jogoro this morning, going out into the city looks pretty slow. It's building up just a little bit here and there. It hasn't gotten to any kind of madness levels, not like we saw yesterday. Um, but we're seeing a bit of traffic on the thicker superhighway right around the Pangani underpass, then going towards the city. Uh, so what was happening here around Gigiri yesterday is not happening today. That's a good thing. Fingers crossed, knock on wood, that that doesn't happen today because it was an absolute mess. Outer ring is also piling up a little bit here and there. The eastern bypass, we have some movement right around the AP Training College. Uh, Langata Road also looks pretty good. 6.30 and not much traffic. This is a good sign. Perhaps we actually have started Wednesday off, right? Keep our fingers crossed. Okay. Let us know what it looks like where you are. The bypass is looking pretty good. Use that coming out of Westlands in the name of the Red Hill Link Road. And also use the Southern Bypass coming out of Mombasa Road. Eastern Bypass as you get off Outer Ring if you can. Many, many options this morning. Talk to us on Spice FMKE on Twitter. Text on 40127. Let's keep things in good form and continue this Wednesday morning. <laughs> Showmax.com. <laughs> and this is the season for gifting. If you buy Showmax, subscribe to Showmax during this festive season, you get an extra one month free. Subscribe to Showmax during this uh, festive season. Pay for a month, you get an extra one month free. So we are gifting Ndu. And we said that she is subscribing to the free trial for 14 days. And then thereafter, she'll now get the full thingy. Yeah? So from the next hour, you'll be telling us what you're experiencing with your 14-day trial. Okay, yeah? I'll tell you. Yes. Mm. First of all, your journey to subscribe for, for the 14-day trial. What, How it started. What did they ask you? <laughs> Huduma number, ID, <laughs> PIN number. Father's plots of land. Yes. What did they ask for? Mm. You know, your bank account details. Do you know Mark DeMessel? Is he your friend? <laughs> all those kind of details. You'll tell us later. Good morning. <laughs> FM, Malindi. Mature, intelligent talk every morning. 
Spice up yourself. Mornings done right. 18 minutes to 7. City, what are you looking at? I am looking at a very interesting article because it has appeared on both the business on both the business daily and it has also appeared in the standard mm -hmm. okay it is uh well it's an op-ed mm. by the japanese ambassador uh. outgoing let me be you know you have to be clear about this the outgoing japanese ambassador uh. and um what it is that he has had to say about this delightful country of ours kenya mm. and more specifically the article focuses on why it is Japan seems or appears to have focused on Kenya as one of its leading partners when it comes to development on the continent. Uh -huh. Okay? Now, one of the things that he says, that he traveled around 15 countries uh, during his tenure. Mm. He was actually here as ambassador to Kenya. Okay? And this particular ambassador has had one particular unique quality. He likes singing. Mm. He, he actually... He and his wife. Ah, Baz. He even sang this song by Eric Wanaina Daima. Mm. Okay. Now, it isn't really uh, often that you come across somebody who, A, likes the language that you call your national language, mm. likes singing, would like to be known as having sung a famous and a popular song within this country. But more importantly, he talks about the very many projects that his country and Kenya have been involved in. Now, why have I picked on this story? Mm. Whenever we talk about uh, bilateral trade and we talk about uh, foreign partners, mm. we always look at the development projects that these countries have been involved in with regards to uh, the assistance or the help they provided to the country. Mm -hmm. Some countries are very loud about the assistance they give. Mm. Some are less loud. Some don't, unless you read about it or you know about it or you follow it closely, uh, you will not find them talking about it in very, very loud terms. Yeah. Now, I happen to have worked for a long time for an institution that had a similar arrangement with an institution in Japan called JICA. Mm. And JICA not only helped put up a lot of the infrastructure that you find within Kemri, mm. other partners also assisted, but JICA was at the forefront. But a lot of educational grants were offered to people postgraduate education. Mm. Sorry. Yes, not just the Kemri, but also the University of Nairobi. Now, many people forget or will not know that JKU Art was part so of that. Yes, precisely. But what you've heard me mention on many occasions is what I found fascinating. How it is that through this same organization, four bridges, beginning with Sabaki, coming on to Kilifi, coming on to Mtuapa, coming on to Nyali Bridge. Now, bridges and the building of it may not seem significant, but what it does, it actually pulls that whole region together. Because if you know where Sabaki comes from, where it starts from Internal River, and it comes right through, it opens up spaces that nothing else can. So the question that came to my mind was, when we think of development, what should be our yardstick? Is it infrastructure? Is it institutions that are lasting and provide uh, manpower development like universities and colleges? Yeah, it's got to be a combination of things. Yes, it's is it financing mm. our external debt? What is it? And I think, as you correctly say, it is it is that. Mm. But at the forefront of my thought was, for how long are we going to continue sitting and waiting for other people to come and solve our problems? Question for you. <laughs> because that's what we seem to do. I praise our partners, but I also look internally and say, the partnership and the help we seem to have been driven to a place where our entire conversation seems to revolve around when are we receiving help. We are reliant on yes. aid. Yes, yes. And to hear that conversation cascading even to the level of counties mm. and to the level of uh, constituencies where there's that constant, dripping, tiresome narrative of, oh, the government ought to help us do this, the government ought to help us do this, mm. without a commensurate balancing of conversation of the money that we've received has money to do this and this and this and this, and the shortfall is this. That you don't hear. You, you just hear, hear we want more money, we need more money. To complete this. Yes. <laughs> hey, let's wait and see the next Japanese ambassador and what they'll bring to the table.
but I think the Japanese ambassadors have always been, you know, very, very um, good at what they're doing in terms of representing their country here. Now, yesterday we were talking about uh, the eggs issue, Kenya, Uganda. Yes? Yes. <laughs> you know, we started with, oh, restricting milk importation from yes. Uganda to Kenya. We've mm. gone to eggs. We've been playing games with maize importation or blah, blah, blah into Kenya. Yesterday, the cabinet of Uganda met. And they're like, ah, <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> Uganda will now restrict from its domestic market certain raw and processed agricultural products from Kenya in a reciprocal move that follows her eastern neighbor's continued ban on some of her farm products. On Monday, the Ugandan cabinet finally agreed to this nearly two-year-old proposal, which has often been opposed by President Yoweri Museveni. According to Ms. Rebecca Kadaga, who also serves as Uganda's Minister for East African Affairs, the Ugandan cabinet has directed the Agriculture Ministry to identify and list particular Kenyan products that will then be banned by the Ugandan government in a short time. We have been too patient. In the past, we have not reciprocated, but for now, we are going to. This has gone on for too long, and within a short time, they too will understand what we are going through, she warned. Kadaga addressed the media yesterday morning. Kenya and Uganda have for long had trade fights, but the latest hostilities between the two ESC partner states began brewing uh, when in 2019 when Kenya stopped importing Ugandan milk, particularly the Lato brand. July last year, Kenya followed up with a ban on Ugandan sugar against an early agreement to increase Uganda's sugar exports to Kenya. Players within Uganda's poultry industry this week petitioned their government over Kenya's ban of Uganda's poultry products from her market for nearly a year now. Kenya maintains that some of their products are substandard and that it's protecting its domestic market. Kenya is Uganda's biggest trade partner. Our export to Uganda uh, were worth 673 million US dollars in 2020. Uganda's exports to Kenya stood at 465 million dollars within the same time. So here we are. Here we are. The cabinet has sat and for two years there was a proposal sitting in cabinet. Mr. President says, no, 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 people, no, 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 no. This. this is just a tantrum they're throwing, they'll come down. That was milk. Sugar. There's an agreement. Let's increase how much sugar we are, we are sending into Kenya. Kenya says, no sugar from Uganda. It's substandard. Eh. Okay. Hey, no, 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 no. Just leave them alone. We go up to this point. Eggs. Uh, cabinet now has to decide. Okay, now okay, fine, let's enough. also prepare our own list. Of what now they can't give us? Of what we will ban. Is this necessary? No. No, must we get to this point, really? It does. It's not necessary, especially when you can see the benefit of doing things in the total opposite direction. And I can see, I can understand. Look, I know I can't. I can, I can appreciate the flexing of sovereign, of sovereign muscle. I can appreciate that. However, you know what? We're talking about substandard products coming from Uganda, etc., etc. Guess what? They're being consumed here. They're being bought here. They're being. Why can't we just accept that there are weaknesses and there are strengths, country to country, and then work together and create that symbiotic relationship between the two? It's absolutely possible to do so. Wouldn't be the first. It's not going to be the last. It doesn't need to reach where it has reached. You know, you actually get the impression that those who are recorded as having spoken from our side, that is the Kenyan side, that is items or these products are substandard. So it's like Uganda produces substandard things to export to it's Kenya. Yeah, they give and, you the and drinks. Yes, yes, and then what, what they consume is different. Really? It's an insult. Where do people come up with these stories? I mean, this is your largest trading partner. Oh. You can even see the trading balance. Mm. 76 billion. That's what we take. What they bring to us is 56 billion. You can see there is a clear 18 billion that we gain from this business, more than, it doesn't balance off. It balances off in our favor. Yet, even for just good neighborliness, for heaven's sake, even if the goods were substandard, is there not a better way of having spoken? Is it, is it difficult for, for, for those in leadership to actually, Uganda really isn't really far away. No. You don't even need to fly to Uganda. Is it not possible to, for a conversation to be had and say, folks, uh, where are the kinks? Can we fix this? Why don't we iron this out? Are we saying that those conversations have been had and no progress has been made? I don't think so. 
You know, it just exposes the reason why we are seeing all these imports coming in from Uganda, especially of raw food product, is because our cost of production in Kenya it's is too exp- high. It's just too high. That's it. There's nothing. Look, guys. Our government should not oh, that. substandard, blah, blah, <laughs> blah, blah. Mm-hmm. When Kenyans are going onto their shelves and buying lato milk, it's because they feel that it's good. Exactly. Exactly. And you have Kenyan farmers crying this same story, saying, do you think that Kenyan farmers are within the boundaries of Kenya alone mm. and they do not speak to their counterparts in other, in other countries to find out, guys, how are you surviving? You think they don't know? You think it's a secret that they're not aware that their neighbors are actually thriving in the same sector that they are and they cannot even make a shilling? Look across board. Tea, coffee, maize, sugar, poultry, across board. Have we not heard the same thing? We've spoken to people here who deal with dairy, people who deal with grain, people who deal with roots, vegetables, potatoes across board. What do they tell you? Same thing. We'd rather people burn down their coffee. People uprooted their coffee and put something else. Why did they do that? Because they're not making profit. What's the point? I can't make it. Everything I put in is what I realize. I don't get anything. Ever. Do you think they do not know that it is cheaper? In the neighboring countries, we of are stuck. They know. We are stuck. We are stuck with this idea of taxing the living daylights out of the citizens of oh. this country, and then now instead of manning up and simply saying we have a problem that we, we can fix, if I was a, if I was a, a trader in poultry products, why bother keeping chicken when somebody's producing eggs cheaply just across the border? Why, why would not the bother of chicken, you chicken feed? God, Do you nah, know nah, what? nah. I wouldn't bother. Can, can we be honest that if you just look at Of course, maybe what you will not see in the media. But the people who are bringing in these products from Uganda are the farmers in Kenya themselves who are now bringing them in from Uganda and Tanzania and selling them for a profit because why sit on the farm nine months out of the year and you make nothing? Meanwhile, you buy a cheaper product from Uganda and then you sell it off in Kenya. Who do you think is selling it here in Kenya? You know, (laughs) I remember once traveling home some two years ago Three, yes. And uh, Moroni Shopping Center, those who want to call it a town, it's actually a shopping center. Um, and there was a pickup, and it was laden with trays and trays and trays of eggs. Mm. And I remember, it was an interesting site. I'd never mm. seen such a site before. And somebody explained to you, I don't know, these are from Uganda. So I said, so they came, like they said, no, 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 there's somebody who brings them. It was explained to me, mm. okay? And people were actually buying it. It was around 10 in the morning. And people bought and bought, and I observed, and I observed, and I observed. At that point, I just said, well, it looks like... It's a thriving business. business. Yes, exactly. But, but I decided to ask a relative of mine who does business at the trading center. He told me, but those eggs are very cheap. Mm. And it, it makes sense to actually buy. This was some three years ago. Mm. As I said, I heard it, shelved it. it. It didn't occur to me to make an issue out of it. But if three years ago this was happening... How many more people do you think realize that it is far better? So that somebody somewhere decided them, they were benefiting one from the feeds, mm. the byproducts that help bring about these things. Mm. And the moment people are buying eggs from Uganda, they're not going to bother with that stuff. No. So if that is your business, you are going to do badly. Exactly. And so you jump on this bandwagon and you say, okay, where can I get the extra shilling? As opposed to putting, I'm buying expensive feed, I'm buying expensive fertilizer, I'm buying other expensive farm inputs. Hold on a minute. And this thing, I can buy it cheaper and then I make a profit on top. And it's a finished product. And Exactly. I don't have to do anything. And it is the farmers here who have been crying about these expensive things who are the distributors of the same products in Kenya. We have had issues with uh, imports from these neighboring countries. So there was also the issue of maize from Tanzania. We did. Right? Onions, Onions from, from Tanzania. Tanzania. And what our government Oranges is doing, yes. from Tanzania. We talk about, oh, yeah, protectionism, protect our Kenyan farmers. But support is what should be the, the key word here, not protect. It should be support. And if you can see that clearly it's more profitable to grow onions in Tanzania and bring them to Kenya. Look at what is it that's making it work in Tanzania. Why not support the Kenyan farmer to be able to do the same and compete? Eric, you see, the, you see where the real imbalance comes in? We have no problem exporting our manufactured goods yep. to the region because that's what we've been doing for a long time. Yep. And we 
have been exporting a lot of finished products to our neighbors. And they buy it and they take it. Now, it's a benefit. It's our strength. So what are we saying to our neighbors? That we want to control everything. We, we want to be the ones who actually supply everything. Mm. Then how then do you have a partnership if your partners or your neighbors can't benefit? In the same this way, is going, clearly benefit. This is what is going to hurt us. It will. It is. More than help. Uganda is Kenya's largest export market. It is. But you know, Eric, what is also significant? Those who are the borders don't care about these rules. Mm. Okay? Because they are going to continue trading. And if you ask me, The worst part is that that's, that's where the pain comes in, ZT. Yes. Mm. Because when restrictions are put in place, it will become more expensive for these traders along the border. Because now they cannot bring the goods directly. They have now to start looking for Pandemic. Magendo routes. Mm. It becomes more expensive. It's going to hurt us in many ways. <laughs> in many ways. And, and I, I, don't, I, I, I don't really understand why we have to get here. Anyway, one more story before we go to the uh, news. Alarm as rogue students now dictate how schools are run is what is being carried uh, in the nation today. Um, on Sunday night, a scene that has become all too familiar played out as an Iku Boys Secondary School in Tharakanithi County. Learners at the school became restive and chased away Principal Joseph Mbai together with some teachers and guards who tried to calm them down. So they said, all of you, out. Their grievance was that prefects had been given too much power, were too strict, and had been given authority to punish them, and that the administration believed everything that these prefects reported. So they said, you know what? If you people are not listening to us, raise it to the ground. Mbai called the police to help stop the rampage. When they delayed, he drove to the station to pick them up. But by then, they had, by the time they arrived in the school, four dormitories had gone up in smoke. The following morning, the learners walked out of the school and went home. A disturbing trend is spreading across the schools where learners are increasingly seizing control from authorities and dictating how schools are run, including deciding whether to stay at school or to go home. Hmm. So yet another school has said, you know what, you're not listening to us, burn it down, we go home, we will say when we will come back to school. <laughs> This is becoming a joke, by the way. It's, it's becoming more and more rampant. Learners have been giving ultimatums to principals on a wide range of issues, including, <laughs> not limited to, the school timetable. Now, yeah, this is yeah. How we, we want to, to go home now. We want to go home We're now. We're not doing exams. Those exams that you're talking about, you hold on to them. We'll be back. The prefects are too powerful. Said. Prefects are too powerful. They punish us at will. You people are not listening to us. Pre prefects can make up stories that you people believe them. No, 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 no. We are going. And home. then they go on the rampage. The headmaster, the principal, comes to talk to them. Chase him away, plus his. You know, chasing away is not that you hey, kuenda, no, kuenda, no, no, kuenda. No, 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 it's no. pelting with. Until the man I has to go to the I hope the state is watching <laughs> because <laughs> citizens may yet copy their children. Uh, 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 mm -hmm. uh, 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 it's girls. Good morning. It's 7 a.m. up your life the latest news from around the world 94.4 spice fm this is news Lab, dennis Asset. the ministry of health is today expected to hold a meeting with the council of governors to discuss county government's readiness to combat the omicron variant of covid 19. The LCS Mutai Kagwa said today's meeting is aimed at discussing strategies and measures to be taken in case such cases are reported in the country. However, Kagwa said so far, no Omicron case has been confirmed in the country saying COVID-19 patients admitted to various hospitals have been affected by the Delta variant. We do not have anybody hospitalized with the Omicron variant, so we are hoping that uh, that either A is a strain that is very mild or B is something that we are going to overcome easily. We are meeting with the Council of Governors to determine and to, and to plan a way forward in terms of preparation because there is no doubt that um, this new variant is most likely going to spread across the world. 
This as Britain removed all the 11 African nations from its list of dangerous countries to visit following the Omicron outbreak. The countries affected by the new UK directive include Angola, Botswana, Swaziland, Lesotho, Malawi, Mozambique, Namibia, Nigeria, South Africa, Zambia and Zimbabwe. Regarding the vaccine, Kagwe stressed that the 21st December deadline issued in September for Kenyans to be vaccinated remains in place. Kagwe, who retweeted that the government is not forcing Kenyans to be vaccinated, insisted that those who will not be vaccinated by the deadline will only access services through other means like online. Nobody is forcing anybody to do it, except that obviously as a government we have a responsibility and we cannot shy away from the responsibility of urging Kenyans to be vaccinated because you save your life and you save the life of your loved ones and the life of your friends. The only thing we have said is that if you want to come to a government office, because we have so many people in that government office who we don't want to expose, it's okay, go online, make a telephone call. But if you want to mark to come physically, it's only fair that we protect us. High Court Judge Anthony Marima suspended the directive until the case is heard and determined. Now, the High Court has issued a warrant of arrest against Director of Criminal Investigations George Kinoti for contempt of court. In a letter to Inspector General of Police Larry Mutiambai, the court ordered that Kinoti be arrested and presented in court to face contempt of court charges. Kinoti is accused of failing to return a cache of firearms belonging to businessman Jimmy Anjige as directed by the court. Last month, the DCI boss was sentenced to four months in prison for contempt of court after failing to comply with court orders to return firearms seized from businessman Jimmy Anjige. In Bakasti East, Member of Parliament Babu Weed has been acquitted of attempted murder charges after a DJ he shot in January 2020 withdrew the case. Felix Arinda, commonly known as DJ Evolve, told the court through his lawyer that he did not wish to proceed with the matter. In his ruling, Senior Principal Magistrate Bernard Choi said although the court was not involved in the negotiations, Owino was taking certain obligations towards the welfare of DJ Evolve, who had agreed on an out-of-court settlement. He further pointed out that when the complainant rights to court to withdraw charges of the accused, the court has no option but to encourage reconciliation as envisaged in the constitution. Now, the political space continues to have new entrants every other day, with the new entrant being the Democratic Action Party of Kenya. The party led by Kandui MP Wafula Muyini seeks to field its candidates for other positions but that of the president, they say, as DAP. They will be supporting ODM party leader Raila Odinga's presidential ambitions. Defense here, Sujino Malo says the aim of the party is to bring Western leaders together for next year's elections in partnership with ODM leader Raila Odinga through his Azami Yolo Moja movement. Leo ni mefrai sana ya kwamba tumeanza safari tena. Tumeanza safari tena. And the journey we want to take is a journey of national unity. Kukata siyasa itakayo tugawanyisha kwenye misingi ya kikabila ama ya kidini. Kukata siyasa itakayo tugawanyisha kwenye misingi ya wale walio maskini na matajiri. Kukata siyasa itakayo tugawanyisha kusema hawa ni wamulima na wale ni wa majini kule nimesikia hapa mkitangaza wazi ya kwamba mmepeana uongozi wa chama hiki ruksa ya kuenda waangalie na wasemezane na vyama vingine katika muungano wa azimio hiyo ni kweli DAP, which has its roots in Western Kenya, aims to end the control of ANC and Ford Kenya has in the region, which analysts are saying the party's formation would further divide the votes from Western region. Now, Deputy President William Bruto has continued to accuse his political competitors using government institutions to seize control of the country. Ruto has lashed out of the position, saying they have no development agenda. This is Newswire. I'm Dennis Aceto. Spice FM, Nakuru. Okay, well, it's good while it lasted. Uh, now we have traffic on Mombasa Road, and that's in and outbound. Uh, coming off from the SGR, moving very slowly, then out towards General Motors. Then it's not too bad till you get to the nearest stadium roundabout. And then Langata Road, which was pretending like it was not going to have traffic. Now there is a lot of traffic there. So she fooled you once. Don't let her fool you twice. If you can avoid Langata Road today, please do that. Uhuru Highway also getting towards the Haile Selassie roundabout today. That has slowed down considerably. Gong Road picking up here and there. Uh, we're looking at 
at Jogo Road packed. Uh, we don't have that problem that we did on Lusaka yesterday. Uh, just at the roundabouts is where things are going to slow down a little bit. But Jogo Road seems to be giving off the most today. I think a super highway also was hiding behind the curtains. And then now I guess you can't. The sun is out and we see you. A lot of traffic there going towards the city. It's also building up on Kiambu Road a little bit here and there. Limuru Road has also joined the sisters and brothers in terms of uh, contributing to traffic. So it's starting off at about 7 o'clock. Let's see what it looks like in a short while. But for now, Wednesday morning traffic is in full form. Spice of MKE on Twitter, text 40127. This is The Situation Room, the home of hard-hitting political commentary and penetrating insights about the state of the nation. This is a talk radio experience like no other. The Situation Room, a place for hard truths, debates, and elevated conversations. The Situation Room, witty, political, engaging, deep, controversial. In the room, we have C.T. Muga, researcher, academic, seasoned political observer, a fountain of wisdom in these politically uncertain times. Ndu Oko, Nigerian by birth, Kenyan by choice, communications expert, pan-Africanist, a truth seeker and believer in people power, and Eric Latin, agent provocateur, the man in the chair, seasoned journalist, news hound, a man who believes in punching up, not down. This is The Situation Room. The only way to start your day. Eight minutes after seven. Good morning. How are you doing? Welcome to Kenya's Biggest Conversation. If you're just joining us, this is the second hour of the show. We are here until 10 a.m. As we are every week the morning, Monday to Friday. CT, how's the day's proverb? Mwenye shoka hakosi kuni. Mwenye shoka hakosi kuni. Yes, the owner of the axe never lacks for firewood. Mm. Or never lacks firewood. Mm-hmm. Spoke like a preacher. If I was a preacher, I would have said, Wenye kuni. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm a shoka. <laughs> Sasa, wacha tu rudi kwa methali. Mwenye shoka. Ukweli wa mambo. Hakosi kuni. Ukweli mwingine. Na hayo, ndiyo. Then I'm not, uh, you know, now, if I was what Eric has proposed that I am, uh, that is how I would have approached it. Hey, mm. Okay. So, <laughs> Dave Chappelle says, this student unrest is a version of the impunity that we see all over on our roads, in government, in rallies during COVID-19, law, no less, contempt of court, etc., etc. I'm not surprised. We need a national reflection strategy to solve this. So we form a task force. No, we don't. <laughs> no, we don't. Eh? No, we don't. What do we need? No, we do not need a task force. The first bit made sense about reflecting. Eh. Because, Eric, as you mentioned, what are we seeing? Fruition. Full circle. Where do you think these young people pick up these habits that we see? Where do you think they come up with these wonderful ideas of how to respond to situations? Where do you think they, they come from? Where? Who sets the example? And at what level? It's at every level of the society. Mm. They are recipients. They sit and they watch. They sit and they watch. Now, the ecosystem in which they exist for the longest time happens to be school. So where do you think they're going to put to practice these things that we are constantly teaching them? Where Hakiyetu. they mostly are. Yes. Constantly. They see it. They hear it. Constantly. And they also know we have a new constitution. They know they have rights. Even as young people, they have rights. They know. Mm. So what do you think? Why don't we ask that question and answer it for heaven's sake? Do these young people have a case? Are they really protesting things that we ought to look at? Is there an issue? Are they worth, is it worth listening to? Yes. And, and, and listening, not just what they're saying, to what they're also not saying. saying. That is feeding the beast. That right there. Tio, let's sit back. Let's listen. Are there, is there something that you're saying? Baba, what are you saying? Are you chest your headmaster? Okay, what I did that? No, 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 no. That's ah. what, uh, no, 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 no. That's no, no, your interpretation no. of it. Uh, Eric, Look, that's, Eric that, that's your version of the it. The first conversation we ought to have is can you people uh, line up? Kuja hapa chapata kiboko. After that, 
we shall review and see, okay, so what else is happening? Eric, I wasn't talking about a one-on-one -on -one conversation that a parent has yeah. with, because it's a nationwide problem. So yeah. at your own level as a parent, there are ways in which you deal with these things, and parents do. Mm. I am saying, mm. we have had, let me get granular, we have had these task forces talking on these issues for close to t over 10 years. They've written reports. And if you read some of those reports, man, they're really detailed and they really got to the heart of the matter. Where is it that we have actually seen that serious attempt at addressing the things or making or putting into practice the things that they have suggested? We now want to come up with another task force so that they can discuss the same problem. Because the manifestation of the problem doesn't mean the problem is different. It's the same problem. It, it was once one particular room was touched. That was the alarm bell. Touch a dining hall. Another alarm bell. Mm. Prefix killed. Now, that wasn't an alarm bell. That was panic stations. Everything at panic stations. So now, it's gotten to where an entire school is going to get burnt. And now is when we want to have a conversation about how an entire school got burnt. The details of what we need to do, Eric, you may very well be right. Children need, may need to line up what you're saying. But this conversation of what to do with what was recommended has not been had and we haven't actually, done Dave anything is actually, about it. Dave is saying we need to have a national conversation about our values and about our own discipline. Not addressing what is happening in the schools. What's happening in the schools, in my opinion, needs to start from, yes, there are very many reports. We shall implement those reports and all, okay? And then there's indiscipline among our young people. Now, do we need to come up and start saying, all right, so let's um, legitimize the indiscipline of our young people by saying there's something that their young, our young children are telling us we should be looking at. We can look at that at step three. Step number one is, first of all, reigning on indiscipline. Number two, then we have the indiscipline at the national level. What is it? Because, like we said, this is a product of something else. Why are we all so indisciplined? But, uh, Eric, what we're seeing in the schools, is that really indiscipline? Yes. Is protest indiscipline? Yeah, this is not protest. Oh, it is protest. It's just very loud protest. Yes. It is protest. Yes. But it is. it has got into, it has now infused with indiscipline. I would Proper, argue. complete, and discipline. I would argue. If that. today, CT, you got out here and you decided, you know what, I've been trying to talk to management and they're not listening to me. You know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to come into the studio and bombard this studio microphone. I they need get, to listen I, I will to get me. jailed. There is a protest, but now what you have gone ahead and done is indiscipline. Actually, destruction of property, if it's by a group of people, mm. It falls under the broad category of protest. Because it's not that we sat down and decided a good thing to do today is burn down this thing. No, no, no. We have issues. We've been bringing them up. They're not being listened to. You know, this thing about listening to what people have to say, it sounds almost facetious, but it's really very important because people like to be listened to. People like to believe that they are important. People like to believe that their views matter. People like to believe that when they say something, somebody will at least give it some consideration. And if they feel their matter isn't given consideration, then they react. That is what I'm, I'm calling a protest. If we're saying that we can, this uh, behavior is being mirrored, you know, across the country, across the world, then we look at reasons as to why it happens in other places. I'll give you a, a very recent example of what happened in a lot of the Western Euron, Europe, uh, European countries, whereby they said, you know what, we're going into lockdown because... Uh, the cases of COVID have risen. Um, another one, they said, we're going to stop you from going to public places if you've not been vaccinated. And then we saw some protests taking place. And we said, you know what? These people are owed an explanation. Their views ought to be heard in terms of why are they being told to do this? What option are you giving them? Those who don't want to be vaccinated, why are you not speaking to them and telling them why it's important or why it's not important or giving them proof or evidence? If we're saying that this can be mirrored, I say it can be mirrored here as well. Sure, indiscipline needs to be handled. Uh, you can't go, I've always said, you can't go and damage property just because you have a certain way of thinking and uh, nobody is listening to you. 
However, that thing that would have been the catalyst for you to behave in a certain manner, has it been addressed? It must be addressed. If, if we can apply it in any other situation, which what we've said, that these children behaving in this way that they're behaving at school is a reflection of what is happening in greater society. If we can say that, for example, you ought to explain to people why they must get the vaccine, as an example, why don't you deal with these issues? Because I refuse to believe that these are just frivolous reasons that students are giving as to why they are not comfortable. Why can that not be also be applied and have that conversation? And that's another problem. We don't want to have conversations. We don't want to face these issues head on, that there can be a problem. But because it is a child who is raising it, we say, I oh, know this one doesn't know anything. Wait until they finish school. Then we have the discussion when you're an adult. By the time you get to adulthood, it's finished. It's done. That's the way you've already dealt with issues all along. You don't want to talk about issues. You don't want to face them head on. You deal with it uh, from a, a, an axe point of view, chop everything down. Here you have an opportunity to deal with things properly. Indiscipline must be dealt with. You cannot say that you'll come and burn down a school because somebody did not speak to you or somebody did not talk to you in the right way or somebody did not hear your views. But there is something underneath all of that that is being said and it must be addressed. Otherwise, this burning of schools, 2022, 2023, 2024. We'll They'll be talking continue. about it in 2020, 2045. Actually, we'll yeah, have, we'll have, deal with the issue. We'll be dealing with more schools. serious problems. Yeah. We'll yeah. have no schools. We are saying the same thing. Only that I'm putting one, one ahead of another. I'm saying the number one we need, thing we need to do, restoration of law and order, restoration of discipline. Number two, now, okay, so what are the issues and start addressing those issues. But the number one has got to be that the children have got to know that there is law and order. That's the basic bottom line. Because if we start addressing number two and we never come back to a number one, we will have a repeat of the same. Anyway, there's something else that's uh, out in the public. I major, made a major conversation yesterday on social media. And this is covered in the papers today on the standard it's on page nine and it's about babu we know what's what's the lowdown with babu Ndu? so i tell you the story yes so let me just read a little bit of the story yes. okay as reported by the standard yes. and then now i can give my interpretation okay a court in nairobi has terminated the attempted murder trial of embakasi east mp babu Owino. This is after Felix Orinda, who is also known as DJ Ivo, filed an application seeking to drop the criminal charges against the legislator. However, Babu is not entirely off the hook as the court declined to stop a second charge of acting disorderly while carrying a firearm. According to Milimani Magistrate Bernard Ochoi, the second charge was instituted by the state and can only be withdrawn by the Director of Public Prosecutions, Nudin Haji. The magistrate also factored in that Babu had brought DJ Evolve and a, bought DJ Evolve an apartment and hired a specialist to take care of him. He said Haji's concern about the DJ's welfare had been catered for and was improving. It is noted that the accused and the complainant were friends even before the incident and appear to have maintained the same even after the incident. The accused is currently undertaking certain obligations and has given an undertaking to rela in relation to the welfare of the complainant in reference of restitution. I have come to conclusion that this is a matter that the court should encourage restitution and therefore I will allow the application to withdraw the charges against the accused in count one. So there are two counts, right? Mm. And they're saying that what then has allowed this withdrawal is the application that was put forth by um, DJ, Evolve. DJ Evolve who said, you know what, withdraw this murder charge. I mean, from our side, we don't see that it is necessary. He's taking care of me. Uh, in terms of my medical bills and all of this, he's supporting my family. He has bought me a home and we have camaraderie now. We are all right. Mm. So in terms of that ugly side of the law and all of this prosecution, it is not necessary. Because what would, where would I, essentially, where would I be if you're going to put him behind bars, for example? Uh, that nobody else, who is going to take care of me? Mm. But here he's out. He's taking care of me. So drop that. Court says, well, if the complainant... <laughs> In this matter, this is what they are stating. We see no objection and we will grant it. Uh -huh. So that has been granted. However, the state is the one that brought uh, the second count and says he was behaving in a disorderly manner 
while bearing a firearm. And that's a charge that we must bring against him as the state. And the only person then that can withdraw that charge is the DPP. And the DPP has said, and I'm not withdrawing. And the DPP said, I am not one. withdrawing that charge. <laughs> we will take it onto its end. Well, both cases were taken by the DPP. It's the state that was charging him, even in the first attempted murder charge. But their primary witness is the one who is now saying, uh, you know what, I don't really I'm feel we should continue this. with this particular matter. And went to court the first time. The court actually refused to uh, heed to the first application mm. by DJ Evolve. When he first went and said, I'd like to just, you know, Previous recant thing. anything against this gentleman. Because the ODPP objected and said, look, he's saying that he's taking care of, uh, he's being taken care of, but how is he being taken care of? So they went back and the accused has even gone further and said, I'm going to buy you an apartment so that we remove the issue of you needing to pay uh, house rent. That burden gone. I am paying for a specialist to come and take care of you. I'm supporting you in this way and the other. Basically, this is a man who's saying, I'm going to take responsibility for one, two, three, four. And the victim here says, okay, I think um, I'm happy with what has been presented. When it went to the court the second time, now the judge, is, the magistrate is saying, the first objection that was being raised by the ODPP seems to have been addressed here. And I feel uh, under the circumstances, it's noted that the accused and the complainant were friends even before the incident, and they appear to have maintained the same even after the incident. The accused is currently undertaking certain obligations and has given an undertaking in relation to the welfare of the complainant in reference of restitution. I've come to the conclusion that this is a matter that the court should encourage restitution and therefore I'll allow the application. Now, why was there such hue and cry everywhere? social media and, 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 and all spaces there's so many things that are being implied there's so many things that are being assumed that i think that's why you saw the hue and cry mm -hmm. so one of them is that you know what it could have been that uh, the family had been leaned on uh, to make this uh, application for withdrawal mm. and uh, that then they were now dazzled with the money and that is why that without this leaning or the, without this impression that was heavy on them, that they would not have said, okay, let's see if we can apply to have this whole thing withdrawn. There is that one aspect. <laughs> the hue and cry is that this man's life will never be the same again. He is paralyzed from the neck down. He is unable to take care of himself. He will never live a life you know, similar to that which he lived before this incident. So why is it that somebody can get off so easy um, with the alleged charge that he actually, you know, uh, tried to kill him, okay? So why is it, and I think that's now the crux of the matter, that why is it that he gets off so easy with just a, basically a slap on the wrist in terms of, all right, you've bought him an apartment, you take care of him, and that's it. Is that what you need to do? Is it easy then to buy justice uh, in the country? Because that's what it looks like, that, you know, you buy an apartment, you have a specialist come up and take care of him, and that you put some money aside every now and again, and then, you know, you can walk free. And that you can basically do whatever you want. So long as you have enough shilling in your pocket, mm. you can take care of matters. And I think that's where it came from. That folks are asking, why is it so easy to be able to get off the hook just because you have money? Did he get off the hook? Well, in terms of going to jail on a murder, going to prison on a murder charge. Attempted. Murder. Attempted murder charge. Mm. That's what it looks like to folks, that he got off easy. That what he needed to do was pay. Okay. And that's it. Pay that's, by that's, going to jail. Well, no, that all he needed to do to avoid going to jail was uh, pay some money in terms of an apartment and a specialist every now and then. And that he avoided so going to jail by doing that. So basically, in the eyes of many, mm. punishment is going behind bars. Punishment would be going behind bars that your freedom is taken from you. because If he had gone through the, the entire case mm. and then he's ordered, punished by being fined and told, you shall buy an apartment for the victim mm. you shall pay for his medical care and this and the other would and that is the verdict at the end would the public have seen it different yeah no i don't think so i think there would still have been a baying for blood 
I do. Which is go to jail. Yes, but look, is that not what people want? Look at it. An individual who is said to be, you know, uh, pampered in society, has money, can do whatever he wants, essentially. People are obeying for blood. Is that not what you see now, that this is too easy? Why do you hear the cry that he was let off easy? He was so, let off easy. People so, want to see somebody suffer for what they've done to somebody else. So beyond what uh, Babu Oweno is accused of, mm. what else does Babu Oweno represent to these many people who are begging for blood? Mm. What Privilege. Privilege. So, privilege. What else? Is Combined with this bad boy attitude that you can do what you want and get away with it. Mm. So it's that's impunity. That's what people see. That's what people see. It's the indiscipline you're speaking of. Yeah, mm. that's what Early people on. see. And people are not happy. People are not satisfied with it. It gives a bad taste in the mouths of people who say, you know what? You can do whatever you want and if you have some money, you can get away with it. In the same light, people are struggling. And you see somebody getting away with basically murder. So, and it doesn't but, but, sit well with folks. But no, if we uh -huh. say he's getting away with murder, then the assumption is we're assuming. Can we discuss this thing though it's in court? It's, the particular, this particular, particular charge is out. Court. Right, so we can discuss it. Huh? Mm. The, are we saying then that DJ Volvo shot deliberately? You see, or is it this person's indisciplined behavior mm. is what led to this very, very unfortunate outcome? Yeah, plus then adding it and blaming it on the alcohol. Mm. Yeah. The alcohol doesn't get away scot free here. No, but though, I'm telling you what people have said. Though alcohol doesn't consume itself, so I, I, I mean somebody has to consume the alcohol. Mm. Okay, but 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 in all honesty, yeah, mm. if you look at the concept of restitution, mm. okay, what do courts do? What are their functions? Mm. They try to balance the issue and say, when we prescribe an edict, it is supposed to restore something that was lost. It's supposed to recover. It's supposed to put in place something which is right and do away with that which was wrong. Mm. Now, jailing someone is an outcome that points to you paying for whatever you did with the loss of your freedom for a period of time. Mm. If it is heinous, then you pay for it with your life. Now, if we look at what constitutes restitution, in this case, a house has been bought medical care is being provided for. Do you ever see situations where somebody is involved in an accident, say you are in a matatu yeah. and you are injured and you are maimed and you are paralyzed. Do you ever see insurance companies who insured that particular vehicle or the owner of that vehicle, do you ever see this level of bother being taken? Now, I'm not lauding what the MP has done. No, I'm lauding the, D, the office of the DPP. You know why? Mm. The those who said, excuse me, this isn't... No, 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 no. We... This! You cannot just withdraw the case on these grounds because we're not certain of this and this and this and this and this. Now, on that note, then you would say, at that point, I would say, this person wanted to get away scot-free because this person's condition had not been considered adequately uh. and provision to ensure that he lives as normal a life as he can with his condition is provided for. So are we saying that in this case now, that given his condition, he's able to live a life as normal as he possibly can with the condition that he has? And that has been adequately provided for. And if so, is that adequate restitution? Is that enough in terms of restitution? If he feels it is, he's the one seeking justice. If he feels it is, then why not? Let's take a break and then open the conversation. We'd like to hear from you. So... The MP Babu Owino was acquitted yesterday of this particular charge of attempted murder because the victim, DJ Owino, also his main name is Felix Orinda, had filed an application seeking to drop the criminal charges against the legislator. The magistrate yesterday said, yes, so I've listened and I've heard that they have come to an agreement. One, the MP shall buy an apartment for DJ Evolve. Number two, the MP shall pay for medical care for DJ Evolve, among other things. And so the magistrate said, I'm satisfied. This is sufficient restitution. And because this is what the victim uh, wants to, uh, with the charges withdrawn, I drop the charges. So is that delivery of justice or is that encouraging impunity? Because that's the conversation now out there in the public domain. It, this is encouraging impunity. Is it encouraging impunity or is it actual delivery of justice? Half past seven, let's take a break. This is The Situation Room.
the only way to start your day. Spice up your life. 24-7, around the world, nonstop. This is Spice FM. Guys, dinner is ready. Please pass the chicken. Wow, Mom, the chicken looks yummy. Can't wait to dig in. Without a doubt, Ken Chick Chicken is usually the star attraction on dinner tables across Kenya because we place the highest priority on the health of the chicken we farm and the goodness of the food we provide. This is strengthened by our absolute certainty of traceability from our farm to your family. Ken Chick, we are cuckoo about tasty chicken. 24-7, around the world, non-stop. This is Spice FM. Famous, the secrets we keep live La Liga action. Offer Showmatch Black Friday special in gear. Leap for one month and get a second month sari. Yani, two whole months of the biggest shows in Kenya, na English Premier League futa, and lots more. Zote kwa one low price only on Showmax. Offer in a chomoka soon, so sign up chap chap at showmax.com. 24 7, around the world, non stop. This is Spice FM. This is something people need to understand. Your money. My money equals our money. We cannot have your money is m- our money mm. and my money is my, my money. money. The only way to live your best life is to create a balance between work, love and play. The Adults in the Room is the only show on radio dedicated to educating Kenyans on how they can stay winning in life and in love. Text the word ADULT to 22840 to get the latest clips from Adults in the Room directly to your mobile phone. SMS adults to 22840. The weather with Spice Light FM. rain in Nairobi at 16, highs of 23 and lows of 15. Nakuru is sunny at 15, highs of 24 and lows of 14. 22 will be the high in Yeri where it's mostly cloudy at 17. And we're looking at sunny conditions at 15, highs of 24 and lows of 13. Mombasa is cloudy at 26, highs of 31 and lows of 25. And we're looking at mostly cloudy conditions at 25 in Malindi, highs of 30 and lows of 25. Sunny conditions at 21 in Kisumu, highs of 28 and lows of 19. And we're looking at partly sunny conditions at 21, going to highs of 29 in Kakamega. Rain showers in Kampala at 19, highs of 27 and we're also seeing rain in Dar es Salaam, highs of 30 and lows of 25. All right, in Johannesburg, 18 degrees and mostly cloudy, highs of 25 and lows of 15 and it's mostly clear in Lagos at 26, highs of 33 and lows of 25. Kinshasa's cloudy at 22, it'll go to highs of 31 and lows of 22. One oh two point five Spice FM Kisumu. Are you ready? Okay. Spice FM. All right, so we're looking at it piling hot and heavy on the thicker superhighway coming into the city. That's quite something. And on, on Gong Road as well, on the other side of the city, Jogo Road quite packed. Lunga Lunga is doing its thing, as is Langata Road today. So you can do a toss-up east-west, east-west, and there's traffic everywhere you look. We're also looking at uh, Kiambu Road where it's quite packed, as well as the Mu Road coming into the city. It is traffic hour officially now. That started quite early. It looks like it's going to end late. Many of the roads are slippery this morning, so let's have a look at things as we go along. Talk to us on Spice of MKE on Twitter, text 40127. So let's talk about the subscription, the 14 day trial, free 14 day trial for DSTV, not for DSTV, but for Showmax. If you want to get Showmax, you can actually start off with this 14 day trial free, and that is what Ndu is doing so that she then will be able to get this gift mm. of Showmax subscription throughout the months from me how you go through that is you you'll create an account very simple put your email put a password and then put a phone number uh, if you're in kenya you know zero seven blah 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 and uh, once you do that you get a 14-day trial you create a new account you go through the process the steps of the 14-day trial you'll enjoy the entire bouquet of show marks all right at the end of the 14 days trial you choose you want to now start paying you just say yes now start paying if you don't it's okay it's okay could you turn up die okay simple as one two three okay 
Mm. So today we have to try that again. Yeah. Let me just remind you. Remind me. That it does not mean that you run away from your promise. No, it does. If you do not meet the condition number no, no, one, no, no, you don't no, no, get. No, no. Sorry, sorry, sorry. You make a promise, there's no condition. <laughs> sorry. I made a conditional no, no, promise. No, 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 no. You see now how people try to escape from their responsibilities? It is a conditional this promise. Is a problem, no. No. I think you really need to go easy on this one, do. On what? The government. No, sorry. That's it's a conditional problem. promise. Going easy on the government, then that's why you find yourself where you are. Look, the government, today. Here, the, the government here is Eric. Not even represented by Eric. The government is Eric. Mm. She has made a promise. Has he said he has rescinded the promise? No, no suddenly the terms have changed. I just told He's you, I want you to get that so that you can enjoy the 14 days free trial so that you know the gift that you're receiving. I don't just start saying, oh, but you see, now that gift. Look. Uh -uh. You'll have enjoyed the gift before do, you even receive it. No, you see, you are behaving like these county governments that we have. <laughs> Okay. You see, how can you just insult me well, in daylight? Like that? No, no. A, if you listen to the end of this story, you'll find I'm actually not insulting you. Okay. Okay. Well, okay. first thing, county governments come into being. Mm. County governments have an allocation that they are supposed to get every month. Mm. Something happens somewhere along the line called COVID and other uh, issues. And you suddenly find you are not able to meet the obligation. There. Now, this is national government. This is Eric. Can't beat those obligations. <laughs> but the story here is this. Don't you get the money? I mean, it delays sometimes. Sometimes mm. it delays by four months, five months. But mm. in the end, you get it. Isn't that not so? Mm. Yes. Yeah, so if you didn't get it at all, you would have an extremely valid case. That's number one. Mm -hmm. Number two, you also live in Kenya. And you know what we are dealing with. The debts we are paying. And right now, we're dealing with rain. Ndu is basically telling Mark Demaso, you promised to send me 100 million shillings. Yes. What? Send the money. Mark Demaso said, open a bank account. No, 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 no. You have to open a bank account for you to receive the money. Okay. <laughs> so open <laughs> bank account. Open bank account. And stop being a county government. <laughs> 22 minutes to eight. <laughs>
the fury mm. that is being expressed against Babu Owino. Yeah. What exactly is the fury being expressed towards? I mean, this direction, what is it about? Is it? And that's the thing. That it is it is, about justice or is it about Babu? Yes. I think it's a combination here. Because it's on one hand, it's that, all right, it seems as if this fellow can do whatever he wants and get away with it. That's on one hand. Mm. On the other hand, it's that there can be an alleged charge against you. And if you have enough money, because look here, if it was somebody else, if it was somebody else that allegedly shot this gentleman uh -huh. and did not have the sway or did not have the money to take care of these matters in the way in which has been taken care of now, yeah. we would have seen a much quicker, a different way of, of things having been done. Quicker how? In court, trial started, sentence given, somebody's thrown behind bars. Mm -hmm. That you would have seen a different result. It's, and that's what folks are saying. If you don't have, if you didn't have money, and if you didn't have any kind of uh, sway, mm. you would not have the same results at all. So are we dealing with a situation where the many people who have expressed whatever it is they're expressing on social media mm. are acting vicariously? Meaning, you're putting yourself in that situation and you're imagining, my goodness, if it was me on other sides of the divide, and you're asking yourself, so you mean this is what it means to have money? Yes. So if I don't have money, if somebody knocks me, meaning you bring to life a situation that would involve you and how you might suffer and how without the influences that we've seen. Yeah. Or you bring to life a situation that many a Kenyan would be dealt with because many a Kenyan are not in the position. Or have been dealt with. Or have been dealt with, that you have seen, that have behaved in the same manner, but have been dealt with a different set of results because they do not have position or money. And that's the thing that many a Kenyan um, in their minds are saying, okay, well, you know what? So people are looking it at this in terms of position and money. Yes. And they're forgetting divide. the other part of the, of, this, of the equation here, which is the alleged perpetrator here going to the victim and expressing remorse and expressing willingness to walk the journey with the victim. Because money or not, the point here is that Babu Owino went to DJ Evolve, went and sat with the parents, went and said, guys, I'm, re I'm really sorry. I am sorry about this. I want to make good the best way I can. How can I? It yeah. so happens that Babu Owino is able to buy an apartment. He's able to. If he was not able to buy an apartment, he had said, you know what, I am going to actually do this, 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 and the other to walk this journey with you. Mm. Is that not the point? I see that that's the point that the magistrate is looking at. Not the amount of money that Babu Owino has no. or the influence that Babu Owino peddles. Mm. Because he could have all that influence and, and run away from it. Yes. Completely. In fact, the influence, we would argue, would enable him to run away from it. Yep. Mm. Let's go to the phone lines, though. I've got uh, two callers on the line. One is John. John, good morning. Morning. How are you? Very well, thanks, John. How are you? Fine, fine. Mkwazima. Kabisa. Abadia kupotea, John. Niko salama kabisa na shukuru mwenyezi mungu. Yes. Um, you know, there's this uh, famous saying when the judge has just finished delivering the ruling mm. that ili iwe funzo kwa watu kama wewe na wengine. Yes. You ask yourself, under this situation, does that apply? Kuna funzo kwa watu wengine kama babu na wengine. Ana kama kuna funzo, is it a positive funzo ama a negative funzo? That's the question I'm asking myself. And what 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 is self saying? Self is saying that this is a very negative funzo. He's telling uh people out there that you can do anything mm -hmm. and if you have money you can get away with it right mm. but has that he gotten away with it john <laughs> i mean john we're asking the question he has how, how? he has he has how how gotten, gotten away with what he has gotten away with attempted murder uh -huh. if you go to our statutes what is what is the, the what is the the, the 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 consequences of attempted murder mm. mm -hmm. he's not buying an apartment Neither is not providing a specialist for person. however long. No, that is not what the law says. What does the There's law say? There's something that the law says. It is, it is delivery that, of justice, isn't it? 
Yes, it's delivery of justice. In and buying an apartment is not delivery of justice. Restitution is, is, is delivery of justice, is it not? You know, if you go to the root of restitution, I think you'll, you'll miss it. Yes. Let me give you an... We are to, like now we are talking about corruption. Mm. If somebody is uh, accused of corruption, like you have had, I had a case of somebody when you buy an apartment for, from uh, uh, illegally acquired money. Yep. And you buy several apartments, maybe 10 years down the line, uh, you, you are accused that you are found to have been uh, found, uh, corruptly acquired these apartments. And then the, 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 you go and uh, the, the court says, you go and say, yes, I was corrupt. Uh, just allow me to uh, keep 10 apartments, but then uh, the, the government can take 15. Mm -hmm. Because the 15 that you are taking is equivalent to the money that I stole. Uh -huh. You need that that is restitution. We have seen that done. We have seen that in many cases. No, no, no. That is not the same. What they do, they take everything. We have, seen, we have seen cases where the EACC has even issued those amnesty calls. Yes, but they don't allow you to remain in anything. Uh, no, but no. they are not telling you that you also bring plus interest. If you stole 10 so million shillings 10 years ago, and that's the charge, bring back the 10 million shillings, whatever you have accrued since then. Yes. See you in the back now. So, the, and, and you think that is okay? Yeah. If, if those who are... Yeah, so <laughs> John, John, let, John, let me ask you this question. I, I, I hear what you're saying, and you're mm -hmm. saying that those who commit such crimes must be punished. And for you, punishment isn't buying an apartment, isn't providing a specialist. It's a course committee. Yes, it, 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 the man must either go to jail or, 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 or have impending death waiting for him. Is that what you'd consider justice? It, yeah, that is, he should even have lost his, 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 seat, as an his MP. seat as an MP. Yes, then okay. you see that there was justice. Okay. Let me, let me just, other callers on the line, John. Let me take other callers. Okay, thank you. Thank you, John. Amani, good morning. Uh, good morning, Eric. Morning. Good morning, Dude. Good morning, CT. Good morning, Amani. Um, I have three examples to give in terms of trying to understand this issue. Mm. We have the athlete Pretorius in South Africa. Yep. The court gave him a very sort of lenient uh, judgment, saying that actually he didn't murder his girlfriend. Mm. Uh -huh. The prosecutor said, absolutely not. Yeah, that's the government. Mm. Said, absolutely not. Yeah, we are going to take this up. This was murder. This sentence is too light mm -hmm. for what happened. Mm -hmm. All right. And so eventually the, uh, another court case was started and he was actually put in prison or house arrest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a much, much, much more severe sentence because they said, you know, on a, in the legal requirement is in terms of judgments for such uh, a grave offense mm -hmm. um, is uh, a certain level of, um, I guess, punishment or retribution by the, by the state, mm -hmm. okay? So that went through. When John Paul II, who's now Saint John Paul II, mm. was, uh, was assassinated, was an attempted assassination against him by the Muslim guy, John Paul II did not uh, push any charges against him, in fact, forgave him publically. Mm. However, the Italian government said, that is fine, that's between the two of you. Mm. However, we have a law to observe. Mm a law that must be, you know, set in place. And so, and therefore, they imprisoned the man. They said this was attempted murder, mm. period. And the charge is, is A, B, C, D, and the judgment must be in accordance with the law. And that's what happened in South Africa as well. The same thing happened to India. Again, another family, their daughter was murdered. She was a nun. She was murdered by somebody who didn't care for Catholics. And the, the family said, we are not pressing, at first they were pressing charges, and then they withdrew. And, and after that, they're like, you know, we have nothing against him. But the, 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 the state said, absolutely not. Murder was committed, and the guy was put into prison for many, many years. Okay? Mm. So we have the two issues. Those the are murder, murder. Yeah, between the, between the persons involved, they can do what they want like this guy did. He said, okay, fine, I'm done. I'm good. I'm withdrawing the case. The judge had no, had no alternative but to dismiss the case because the case was brought by the guy. Mm. However, the prosecution of the government of the country, of Kenya in this case, 
Ethiopia can take up the matter again because this is a, a crime against the state, against the people of Kenya. And therefore, he, has, he may have a case to answer. If they have a strong evidence and all that, he still has a case to answer. So there are two different issues here. I may forgive you and say it's fine, no big deal, I'm withdrawing. However, you've committed a crime. And that's what the state is looking at. The crime committed regardless of your relationship. Mm. Okay, Amani. The magistrate considered that. The magistrate said, all right, I, I see your main witness, the person who's going to come and uh, bring evidence that sustains this particular case, has withdrawn. Yes. So now you as DPP, really? No, but the DPP may have other evidence to bring forward. He may. And, and that's what the, mm. the judicial process is all Ought about. You can appeal. Okay. Absolutely. Thank you, yeah. Amani. Let's hear from Anthony Mombasa. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Very well. Actually, the lady who has just left has explained it so eloquently. Mm. Mm. But my take is on a different issue. Yes, this is the law. The law encourages uh, we have restitution. Mm. But where is the moral lesson from this? The moral lesson. Uh -huh. What have we learned from this? That someone has committed a crime yeah. in a society. Yeah. That society has rules. But someone has decided to go and negotiate this thing on the side by passing the law okay not by passing the law using the law mm. the provisions that are there and he has managed to take this case away from the court right but what is the moral lesson let us not look at it from the law and mm -hmm. moral what moral lesson what do you see Anthony? our kids actually what what the, the thing is this we are seeing the money Mm. Yes, the money was used. Now, let us flip it on a different way that this is a gang member. Mm. He has done, tried to assassinate someone, failed. The gang approaches the, the family, threatens the whole family now. Unless you withdraw this thing, you are all dead. What will happen? The next day, someone will go to court and say, "Me have forgiven them. I don't want blah yeah. blah blah." So and the judicial officer in that case will look at the circumstances of withdrawal. Surely, Anthony. But and you considering that ma the magistrate, the magistrate actually says, and this is I quote the magistrate: "It is noted that the accused and the complainant were friends even before the incident, and they appear to have maintained the same even after the incident." Of significance. The accused is currently undertaking certain obligations and has given an undertaking in relation to the welfare of the complainant. But of, of significance, this matter has been before the magistrate's court. Mm. And the ODPP raised certain issues. Mm. And in this particular instance, the magistrate is referring to those issues and saying, you know something, these issues were raised before because the attempt to withdraw this case has come yeah. before here before. Before me twice. But now... Given that circumstances have changed and certain things have been met, yeah. that discussion becomes a different discussion. I don't see any grounds that now prohibit me from actually... Uh, listening to the applicant. Yes. Yeah. Now, now my, 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 my question is, eh, yeah. how did it end up that what was needed to be met was something with monetary value? Hmm. In terms of an obligation? Why was it, yes, hmm. just monetary value okay what other value could it have Anthony? yes what other that's value it. could it have had because that's why i'm saying in a moral perspective mm. where is this where is the lesson because if we can sit down and i negotiate i'm a, let alone him being a, an mp if i'm a billionaire mm. that value will come from an apartment mm. to a block of flat are we are we are we you understand? Okay. Yeah, so now, Anthony, yeah. me who does not have anything, where does he or does she lie? Anything, where, do, where do they go? I will be told mm -hmm. there's nothing you can do for this gentleman. You are assuming. Go Anthony, I have yeah. another call on the line, but thank you very much for your contribution. Mwalimu Irongo Emos, thank you for holding on the line. We just have about three minutes. What do you make of this, Mwalimu? Good morning. Morning. Eric Adendu, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I think there is uh, 
Okay, I've listened to very good uh, arguments. Mwalumu Mwal- Rongo, you know I'm actually here, so you can actually greet me and I will greet you back. City Moses, how are you? Fine. <laughs> <laughs> Moses, I'm going to I'm going to get to your inbox. Yeah, very good. Now continue, continue with what you're saying. Yes. Let's get to the point. <laughs> yes. Now I, I I have listened to very good arguments, mm. but uh, but I think uh, sometimes as Kenyans we overstretch some of our uh, statements mm. uh, because we know somebody's an MP and so on and so forth. Now. The circumstances surrounding the acquittal of uh, Babu Wino mm. are not very much understood by all of us. We know what we have been told by the court, but how these guys went to discuss and negotiate all this, we actually don't know. Mm. What we know is that these guys have been friends. They differed, uh, and the Babu got into what he did. But how they realize that their friendship must continue is something that all of us may not be able to very much comment on. Mm-hmm. Punishment does not necessarily mean taking somebody to, to jail or some, or, or some other very serious punishment. An eye for an eye. In, yeah. In fact, it's possible that uh, it's not the family that demanded the buying of the apartment. Mm. It's possible that Babu realized, actually, this is my friend. What I've done is wrong. In addition to what we have agreed, let me also buy this for you. Let our friendship continue. Mm. So it's my considered view that sometimes we want to become so hard Mm. on the DPP Mm. when friends have agreed to withdraw the the judges. That's my thinking. Mm. Thank you, Molimo. Asante. What if it was an individual who was not in a position to do this? As long as they're friends and you can demonstrate that in court. You know what happens here is that you set a precedent, unfortunately. And that is just the way the human mind works. That you see a situation like this and you say, oh, okay. So what this means then, essentially, is that if we can come to an agreement and an understanding, and if I have the wherewithal to be able to provide a situation in which this individual might be quote-unquote comfortable, Mm. even after I have done one, two, three, or if I'm able to talk to someone and see it and apologize and show some kind of remorse, then this thing can be sorted out. So you can go ahead and do whatever you want, knowing that that hangs in the balance. And I think that is not right. And the next judicial officer will consider all the circumstances surrounding the case before them. Mm. Remember, there is the assumption remember that, that that somebody, was done, but there's you somebody can't run who away shot the Ronaldo Foods. The, the Ronaldo of Foods uh, proprietor was shot, and the person who shot him was found guilty and was convicted, right? And sentenced. There are precedences on both sides. This introduces a new one on the issue of restitution and taking personal responsibility for an issue. Keep it here. The conversation continues in the next hour. We talk about theft of public debt. Just listen to what Babu Owino had said when he was here in the studio. It is not about my position that can be used to influence anything. The case, the matter is before a court of law. Mm. If I'm found guilty, there is no problem. I'm willing to serve. Mm. I have no problem. Jails are meant for human beings. I will serve my time. I will live my life. I will carry my own cross. If, I, if I'm not also guilty, Kenyans also should accept. Mm. So that's, I can leave it at that. Spice up your life. The latest news from around the world. 94.4 Spice FM. This is but the December 21st deadline for Kenyans to get vaccinated against COVID-19 to be able to access government services, fast approaches, Health CS Kaga has maintained that the government will only offer in-person services to those that have been vaccinated. The CS said that while the government isn't forcing anyone to get vaccinated as it is their choice, they have the responsibility to protect those that have been vaccinated from exposure to COVID-19 virus.
Nobody is forcing anybody to do it, except that obviously as a government we have a responsibility and we cannot shy away from the responsibility of urging Kenyans to be vaccinated because you save your life and you save the life of your loved ones and the life of your friends. The only thing we have said is that if you want to come to a government office, because we have so many people in that government office we don't want to expose, it's okay, go online, make a telephone call. But if you want to mark to come physically, it's only fair that we protect those. An Omicron variant, the CS said that it has not been detected in the country, though his ministry is putting in place measures to ensure that the country is prepared for when it is reported. This as a meeting with the Council of Governors is expected to take place today to assess the country, the county government's preparedness. We do not have anybody hospitalized with the um, Omicron variant, so we are hoping that uh, that either A is a strain that is very mild or B is something that we are going to overcome easily. We are meeting with the Council of Governors to determine and to, and to plan a way forward in terms of preparation because there is no doubt that um, this new variant is most likely going to spread across the world. Meanwhile, Rwanda has today reported six cases of Omicron variant of COVID-19, joining a list of countries that have reported positive cases of the variant. This as the UK has removed all 11 African nations from its list of dangerous countries to visit following the Omicron outbreak. The countries affected by the new UK directive include Angola, Botswana, Swaziland, Lesotho, Malawi, Mozambique, Namibia, Nigeria, South Africa, Zambia and Zimbabwe. Kwale County has 5.6% of people living with HIV AIDS, a figure close to 5.7% of the total population of those infected by HIV AIDS across the country. Sandra Shivule from the Coalition on Violence Against Women, Kovao, said the victims were children and mothers. According to Shivule, about 200,000 people affected did not use antiretroviral drugs. She urged the Kwale County government and various stakeholders to put in place more strategies to prevent further transmission of the virus. Now, Deputy President President William Ruto has continued to accuse his political competitors of using government institutions to seize control of the country. Ruto also lashed out at the opposition saying they have no development agenda. Speaking at his home in Kar in Nairobi, Ruto said a large number of Kenyans had realized the importance of electing leaders with an agenda that will benefit them. <laughs> wachana na DCI wapigane na ufisadi na wapigane na uhalifu ndio tuweze kupeleka taifa letu mbele tuondoe vita ya ufisadi na uhalifu kutoka kwa siasa siasa ifanywe na sera na hiyo ndio msimamo wetu Ruto also condemned the formation of regional parties. He says the tribal parties for the calling the charge to work with the government in order to achieve the much needed development. Now, ODM Secretary General Edwin Sifuna has dismissed any possibility of the party not fielding candidates for certain seats in Kilifi County in an agreement with the new PAA party. His statement follows PAA leader Emerson King's statement that the party has already decided to support Rilo Dinga in the presidential race. Also, according to one of the party leaders, William Tengo, they hope to to persuade ODM not to field candidates in some positions. However, according to Sefuna, the PAA leaders are the ones who are afraid of competition from ODM and therefore want an easy way out. He added that Kingi had failed to take advantage of the Azimio Laumoja conference at Kasarani Stadium last week to show his support for Raila Odinga, lest as other governors did. Now, government and private sector partners have initiated a process to sensitize businesses and youth in the Nyanza region about online business through the Ajira Digital Program. David Okeo, Homo Bay County Government, said private sector alliance deputy chief executive officer Martha Cheruto and Ajira Digital Program director Ehud Gashugu launched the program in Homa Bay County. Okeo has urged traders to start selling their wares online with Cheruto saying that the initiative would enable young people to get jobs online. One of the pillars that supports the digital migration is called the social pillar and this pillar is about the youth and women enterprise and uh, job enterprise development and therefore one enables us to implement this pillar is the Ajira Digital Program. This is Newswire. I'm Dennis Aceto. One oh two point five Spice FM Kisumu.
Mombasa Road is an absolute sea of traffic this morning. And, oh, wait a minute. Today is the 15th of December. It's the day when these parts of Mombasa Road should be opened. Hope is not lost. Which part? The four areas that we are seeing the traffic now. Mm. So maybe by the end of today, uh, we will see some magic. But the magic that's happening now is that uh, nothing is disappearing. All the cars on the roads have been there for the last hour and it looks like they're going to be there for some time. We're looking at in and outbound traffic all along Mombasa Road, at least until you get to uh, General Motors. And then it's going to pick up again on Huru Highway, heading out into the city. Very, very slow movement there. The Eastern Bypass, Chaka blocked bumper to bumper action on Langata Road, as well as Aerodrome Road this morning, getting out towards the city. Uh, Rilo Dinga Way also taking a hit as is the thicker superhighway and it looks quite crazy at least from survey. Until the drive-in you wouldn't have too much of an issue uh, coming out of Westlands. Use the Red Hill Link Road because onto Waiaki where you're going to hit uh, a bit of a traffic stop there. Alright, so shall we take a look in a short while and see what it looks like for now? Uh, you're going to have to contend with traffic hour at a few minutes after 8 o'clock. Tell us what it looks like where you are. Talk to us on Spice FM KE on Twitter. Text 40127. This is The Situation Room, the home of hard-hitting political commentary and penetrating insights about the state of the nation. This is a talk radio experience like no other. The Situation Room, a place for hard truths, debates, and elevated conversations. The Situation Room, witty, political, engaging, deep, controversial. In the room, we have C.T. Muga, researcher, academic, seasoned political observer, a fountain of wisdom in these politically uncertain times. Ndu Oko, Nigerian by birth, Kenyan by choice, communications expert, pan-Africanist, a truth seeker and believer in people power, and Eric Latif. Agent provocateur. Kenya's biggest conversation. Thank you very much for tuning in and to the third of the show. It's eight minutes after eight, and we continue the conversation until 10 a.m. this morning. Let's start the hour with the day's proverb from CT. Mwenye shoka hakosi kuni. Explain. Well, shoka is an axe, kuni is firewood, and directly translated is. He who has an axe will not lack for firewood. He who has an appropriate appliance mm. will not lack a solution. Mm. Mm. He who's prepared yes. will not lack. Mm. Okay. Okay, that's a good one. Let's bring the conversation round now to discussing tax burden and debt burden. The campaign this morning is put a stop to public debt theft in Kenya. And we are joined by two guests. One of them is in the studio. The other one joins us via video link. Irene Otieno is the national coordinator at the National Taxpayers Association. She is in the studio with us. Good morning, Irene. Morning, morning. Nice to be here. Karibu sana. Asante. Welcome to Kenya's Biggest Conversation. Always a pleasure. Yeah. yeah. And then we also have Dr. Abraham Rugo, who joins us via video link. He is a country manager, International Budget Partnerships Kenya. Abraham, a very good morning to you, and it's good to have you on the show. Good to have you. Uh, good morning to you. Asante sana. Now, the whole conversation about um, stopping public debt theft in Kenya is... Okay, coming on this uh, call, Chumi campaign, which is a civil society platform committed towards working with stakeholders to resolve Kenya's public debt crisis. This campaign is seeking to bolster constitutional safeguards in public debt management and to push for the accountability of political leaders in public debt management. Now, we are demanding a stop to public debt theft in Kenya, and there's a petition that's uh, being signed, and there's a whole campaign saying sign this petition that is saying, you know, stop theft of public debt. Irene, mm -hmm. what is theft of public debt? What does that mean? Uh, that simply means uh, that when we acquire debt, there has to be a rationale and where are you taking that money to? So we as uh, members of the coalition are concerned that uh, debt in itself is not the issue, but where are we applying the debt? And so uh, we felt that we need it is not getting as much uh, uh, concern and action from both the citizens who will pay for it 
and the government that should be using it. So we said it's easier for them to understand, and we put it as it is, that without any safeguards, then this money is simply being stolen. So it's money that has been acquired, but it is being stolen. I guess the term when, when we've come uh, theft, everyone has been pointing out why do you call it theft? But that simply is uh, the term we have decided to use because mm. there hasn't been action throughout the year. I think my colleagues and members of uh, the public have been concerned about this issue. But uh, coming towards the end of the year, we are not seeing uh, the action and the, the, the recommendations we've been pushing being mm. taken on board. But using two words here, there's the theft mm -hmm. word and then there's stop because mm -hmm. you're telling people to sign up to this petition. Mm -hmm. Stop theft mm -hmm. of public debt. Yes. Stop means that it's already happening and you want yes. us to stop it. Yes. How is our debt being stolen? Uh, the debt is being stolen first, as I have mentioned, who is acquiring the debt on behalf of Kenyans? So where is the parliamentary oversight around acquisition? I didn't wait. Yes. Uh, when you say debt, mm -hmm. you are referring to the money that we have borrowed. Exactly. So money we have borrowed equals debt. Yes. Okay, carry on. Okay, okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thanks for bringing back to that. So this is money that we have borrowed mm. as a country. So the rationale for borrowing is that then it will be applied for needs that we have agreed as citizens because essentially we, the current generation and future generations, will be paying for it. But then our concern, as we then term it as theft, is first, who has acquired that debt on our behalf? What is the parliamentary involvement around it? Is it only an issue that the executive knows about, mm. but has there been oversight from parliament? Secondly, on whose priorities is this uh, debt going to be applied? So has there been public participation for us as citizens and the taxpayers to understand and say, hey, it is a railway gauge that we want. It is uh, an irrigation scheme that we want. So those are the issues that we are tying in and saying, if these bare minimums in terms of uh, the participation around the acquisition, transparency around it, accountability around the debt, if these three angles are not addressed, then that is equivalent to theft. So if we had said that there was a, a laid out plan and, for example, Kenya was borrowing 100 billion shillings from whomever it would be, the World Bank, you know, other development partners, etc., China, right? And they said what we want to do with this 100 billion is that we want to, OK, you know, put up some roads and they will be road X, Y, Z, Right. Uh, we want to establish schools around the country in, count in county X, Y, Z. And we want to do this that, the other thing. So what you're saying is it would not be theft if after the period or even during the period of this debt that we see such things being erected, then we can say that theft is not taking place. Yes. So anything aside from that then would say is theft because uh, first, it has to be clear from the point that you want to acquire the debt, what is the plan? So you do not wake up one day and say, hey, there are deficits in our budget, mm -hmm. the tax revenues are falling, so we want to take on debt. No, it should be something that is procedural, and there are procedural safe safeguards within the constitutions, within the PFM law. And this is what we are saying, that the acquisition of this debt, current debt as we have, uh, does not align with the legal and the constitutional provisions. Mm -hmm. So then it's a whole plan, but we feel that government is always constrained. So revenues are not adding up. Uh, the expenditures are way high. So they say, let us take on debt, but without giving it the long duration, because before you acquire them, there's a process before. Mm. Have you done the, uh, uh, the assessment, mm. the, the impact assessment, and say, hey, these are the returns that we would? So it's not something you can do very fast, but we think our government, we, we know, our government is taking it so fast without looking at all those criteria. Yeah? Right. Abraham, I mean, since this has been established, you know, from your end that this theft is actually taking place, how much then of the country's debt is actually being stolen? One. and Or are we saying that all debt that has been acquired by the country over X period has actually been stolen? Or is there a percentage that we're dealing with here? Yeah, uh, so let me start first by saying that uh, it's difficult to establish how much uh, is being lost. Uh, and uh, I'll, I'll use two examples here. Is that one of the things that uh, has been uh, uh, of great concern is just how much uh, uh, the, the, the inflated prices. Let me start first of all with the total amount of debt that we are talking about. So currently, 
Uh, we are talking about debt of about 7.2 billion uh, or thereabout. Uh, it could be actually higher than that. Trillion. Uh, yeah. And you're talking of a budget, uh, a national budget uh, of about 3.2 3, 3. trillion in the coming year, currently 3, 3 trillion. Now, uh, the president some while back talked of a figure of about 2 billion that gets lost every day, and that could be a mix of both uh, revenues uh, being collected. But take an example of uh, a project like SGR, uh, 340 something uh, kilometers uh, of railway uh, that is largely manual, uh, spend about 354 billion uh, to construct. Uh, you cross over to Ethiopia, you have a uh, double that size, uh, 720 uh, kilometers of an SGR equivalent that is electrified. Uh, costed the same amount. So in, in essence, we actually spent twice uh, twice the amount uh, to construct the same type of uh, railway, but even of a lower lower grade, including uh, just even in right now, the fact that we actually have to dig, dig, uh, dig deeper into our pockets uh, to pay for that. Think about the infrastructure projects that are going on across the country. Uh, is one that we are spending so far much more uh, per kilometer in terms of the construction uh, cost. But even practically, uh, if you were to think about projects that have been put into resources, so for instance, the irrigation schemes uh, that have been put into uh, quite some money, you know, the Gulana Gulalu uh, project, uh, the wind project uh, in Trukana, projects that are uh, the Kimware and Aron dams. I mean, all these projects where we are actually paying money uh, 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 in return, but there's no project that you can be able to see on the ground and say this is what uh, we are. But what is making it difficult for us to know how much exactly we are talking about is the fact that, uh, 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 you know, Treasury and even through the members of, I mean, through Parliament Houses, we still have not seen the debt register that gives you exactly how much we borrowed for what it was borrowed for what are the conditionalities, uh, or I mean, all the conditions attached attached to it? So, so, so there's a gap. There's a gap in telling. We know the aggregate amount that we are talking about, which I've just talked to about, going to almost eight uh, eight trillion Kenya shillings uh, out there about. We know how much is our our budget. We know how much is our deficit year on year. But there's a gap there, and part of this campaign is actually asking: Can we see the register? Can we see? A proper auditor general has also raised questions that there are gaps about the numbers uh, uh, concerning uh, the, you know, how much we have in terms of, uh, you know, how the money is being used. There is a gap in terms of the projects and where they have reached, how much has been spent for each project. So that's where the issue is. Dr. Rugo, I, I want just to go back on the issue of SGR because I think we have these conversations all the time, comparing Kenya's SGR to Ethiopia's SGR. Ethiopia's was longer, Kenya's is shorter. Imagine it did it cost more, more than double. But I think we're just comparing growing mangoes in Makueni and growing mangoes in Elegeo Maraquet. Different conditions and maybe different seed. The, the conversation around that has been had many times. Uh, why was it costing more? Did Ethiopia, uh, did you have to compensate for land in Ethiopia? Does it have many uh, bridges or level crossings in Ethiopia or not? All those things, is it elevated or is it not? I mean, we have had those conversations. I think every time we have the conversation on comparing Kenya to Ethiopia, I feel we lose the track on a particular conversation in some cases. But that's not the point I want to raise. I want to talk about, so we're talking about, yes, we know how much, uh, debt, we we have a, a, a an estimate figure of the level of debt that we are in, seven point two, saying going close to eight trillion uh, shillings, and then there are various uh, institutions that are supposed to safeguard this. There is the Auditor General's office, there is a Parliament and and uh, the parliamentary committees, there are various others that come in, and what I'm hearing is that we don't have clarity on a debt acquisition and clarity on debt allocation that we don't necessarily know that for sure our uh, money that has been borrowed has been stolen so why we say that we are saying stop theft of public debt we are we, we are putting ourselves in a position where if you asked so how who's stealing where how much is being stolen where how is it being stolen we are not able to answer that are we dr rugo yeah, I, I mean, I mean, the, 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 
the argument can be either way. Uh, so first of all, even the institutions, as you say, the Auditor General has already raised questions, has already raised accountability questions concerning uh, the money that has been acquired uh, through debt. The president is on record of raising concerns about the amount that basically we, as I've said, I mean, he's on record as as, as it's talking of $2 billion. Uh, we still, uh, I mean, the figure could be higher or just around that. Uh, and therefore, any time you lack accountability, you know, and we also have cases that basically have been prosecuted. You know, the Kimorera and Aurora Dam is just one of those uh, examples, cases that basically have been, you know, put to court uh, uh, to, to be able. So the only way to be able to say that the unaccounted amount of money is basically money that has been misused and abused. Uh, and there is a public trust uh, to the institutions that, I mean, to the individuals and institutions uh, that are responsible as are responsible to that. It's the only way then you can be able to make an argument that say, if I look here, this is the amount uh, of money uh, that we can be able to uh, account for. This is what the OAG, uh, the Auditor General, is raising. Uh, these are cases, some of which are still lying in court. Uh, 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 and therefore, what action then? Somebody has to take responsibility uh, in that sense. You know, um, well, this I'm going to ask this question of the two of you. Either one of you can respond. You know, the, this discussion about debt is a good discussion. The discussion about how it is we acquire it is an even better discussion. When we look at the efforts that the government is making to try and ensure we pay this debt, it is actually an even better discussion. However, there isn't sufficient discussion on how it is we are plugging the loopholes and how it is we are ensuring that this theft, because the theft contributes significantly to the problems that we are now talking about. Now, making people aware is good. But if you make people aware and yet there is no solution in the horizon, suggested or otherwise, then it just becomes an academic subject. Mm -hmm. And so it doesn't really achieve much beyond titillating our minds and spurring on intellectual discourse. So... Given that the two of you are experts, if one were to ask for a roadmap and say, folks, how can we best tackle this thing at every level, at the Monainchi level, at the county level, at the, at the constituency level, at the, uh, at the ward level, so that, and how do you put in place comparative, uh, significant uh, examples so that somebody, when you talk billions, most people, are, I, I'm among the people who's, who's confused. I, I, a billion, I, I cannot quantify a billion into things I understand. Talk to me about classrooms, I will understand. Road, I may, I may not understand. Talk to me about food that I ought to be eating and I'm not eating, I'll understand. Now, when you set about this discourse, the things that I've mentioned, do you bear them in mind? And if you do, how do you communicate these things to those who you want to hear what it is you're saying? Uh, let me uh, answer that before... Uh, Dr. Ri uh, weighs in, but allow me first to uh, uh, to just comment on something that came up. On um, why would we then say this is theft of public funds when we are saying we do not have uh, the records? Uh, I would uh, add on what uh, Dr. Rugo has said. This is public funds. It's an office where you know we expect the highest level of trust. So if you're not keeping things as simple as contracts, you're not sharing contracts. There are no. Uh, debt registers being made public. What is a taxpayer and a citizen supposed to think? Obviously, there's something you're hiding. So the government has not come to this conversation with clean hands, and neither are we as civil society, media, or citizens also going to uh, sugarcoat the issues. Uh, looking at the decisions that have come from court recently on uh, any issue touching on economic crimes, they have now shifted the burden of proof. If you are the one holding uh, more money than your uh, than what is perceived to be your income. It is you to show how you have then acquired those resources. So in a similar manner in this case, it ought to be the government because where would a citizen get debt registers? Where would civil society get it? Hmm. If the Senate itself and the Auditor General is saying they do not have these documents, what is expected of citizens? So we are putting it there that for us it is theft unless the government proves otherwise. And that is a position and uh, a position that we have seen also the courts moving along. Uh, on to the question you have asked. Uh, indeed, the debt conversation has been something we've found a bit difficult for citizens to rally around first because of the numbers you're talking about. 
and what everyone needs to contend with on a daily basis. So on this particular, we have uh, attempted to uh, look even at the one on the KEMSA, uh, the KEMSA uh, wastage, the resources that were wasted on that. What we have found out is the amount that was wasted would be able to give an, uh, a 1,000 ICU beds roughly, 1,106 per county. So that would already contextualize the whole conversation, particularly now when we're looking at uh, COVID-19 preparedness. My colleague uh, Rugo would, would speak to the others. But when you're asking on what can be done, a lot of things can be done and I'll attempt to just give two or three that we as uh, as National Taxpayers Association, being members of a Kua Uchumi coalition, I think is, is a way out of, of this problem. First, uh, we need to understand what is driving the debt conversation. So we are saying the debt is high. That is agreed, I think, unless uh, otherwise, but that is, is an agreed fact. That debt is not sustainable looking at the revenues we are bringing in and even where you are applying the projects. But what is driving that debt? There's a lot of excesses from the, the government at both levels. So we have managed to look at the audit, Auditor General's report for each county, look at the executive report, look at the assembly report for all the 47 counties. That is something we have been able to do as an institution. The wastage there is a lot. So that makes you also ask the question, if you're saying we're acquiring debt because we have insufficient revenues, but then we are seeing where you are applying, look at the travel uh, allowances that all these entities, 47 entities, and you're looking at an assembly and an executive, it's a lot. And uh, within even COVID, the control of budget has pointed out that in some counties, the travel budget is still high. So you're wondering where are people traveling even within the COVID situation. So a lot of the uh, of, of uh, the expenditure we are having is not pro monanchi is pro a little bit of elite 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 person. So that is one area that we have picked out. And this is an area that not civil society uh, can put pressure on. As citizens that are paying taxes within those counties, querying this report, it's as simple as I trade, I'm a fish uh, trader in Homer Bay. So the county has come with new levies uh, before I, 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 set my, I, I sell my fish. Am I really asking where are these levies going to? Am I querying and seeing that this, these documents are available? We have tried to simplify as institutions, and now we have said we are taking them to traders so that the traders at the point of uh, a county coming to extract money from you, you can ask, where is it being applied? So one for me is to address the excesses at the county uh, level. We come then at the national level, which we have consistently uh, been saying that wage bill must be looked at. We have asked quest simple questions like when you're looking at the NHIF now that we are simply celebrating and we are taking stock on of universal health care. We do not have smart cards even for NHIF. We have heard that uh, uh, NHIF is losing, uh, uh, is it uh, 6 billion, what I was reading from their report, in terms of fictitious claims from private sector that are colluding. So when you look at such an amount, and it's something as simple, private sector has set the pace. And for, you cannot have a private health insurer that doesn't have a smart card. So why is government not doing what they ought to do unless they are shielding players who are elites? Because me and you cannot uh, defraud NHIF. These are players within within government. Mm. So uh, for me, the, the, the thing is very simple, and it's government being serious. They are not serious. I've given you the example of NHIF. Mm. We give like the, the, yeah. NHIF has actually rolled out um, the uh, digitization measure. Yes. Now if you go to hospital, you will even receive an SMS that tells you you've been to this facility and this is uh, what you sought and this is how much NHIF is paying. But they're, they're already rolling that out. Yeah, they're rolling it out. But mm. the question then becomes, how many years have we lost before this rollout? Where has now the pressure come in? Mm. So this is something that ought to have been done from the onset. Because for me, what we are saying as institutions is the private sector seems to even go ahead of government where they ought to, to uh, you know. Government is kind of playing catch up mm. with issues that me and you have agreed is a way to reduce accountability. So... Uh, uh, the, the concern where you then have raised in terms of a roadmap, it's very clear that first we need to understand what is driving what we are calling deficits because really we need to live within our means and we have already given it first, address the wage bill concern because uh, remember the wage bill, uh, when we're talking about the wage bill, it's very high, but we understand it's only 17% of Kenyans that are uh, employed by government itself. So would you say that more than 50% of the budget is going to 
to only 17% of the population. And when you query further, mm. a significant part of it is on allowances. So we need to agree as a country, is allowance as important as public services? Do we, and, and allow me to belabor this a bit. I have seen attempts by the Salaries and Remuneration Commission to say we need to uh, address allowances. And I remember CO2 and the likes coming up and saying, no, 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 you cannot touch civil servants, you know, we are here representing government. Mm. But as a country, we need to agree. And I give the case of COVID-19. Mm. So even if I was a civil servant, I have my allowances of uh, 8,000 when I, when I travel or something. But now when the pandemic is here, we are, all we are all relying on public services. Public services that we have perennially ignored, but everyone has their simple safety net of 7,000 allowances. So how does that help the bigger, the, the, the larger, the, all, of, all of us? So I think some of the things you mentioned is not only government, but even we as citizens agreeing, let me uh, not take on the allowance, but insist that public services is strengthened so that mm. I don't have my 8,000, but my child can go to a good public school. There is good health care. There are good roads. That for me is more than the 7,000 that I can get as Irene, but would be able to give us a safety net as a country. Okay. Half past eight. Let's take a break and then we'll continue the conversation. With us in the studio is Irene Otieno. She's a national coordinator of the National Taxpayers Association, an expert on matters of governance, public service. She's a lawyer as well. Joining us via video is Dr. Abraham Rugo. He's a country manager, International Budget Partnerships. Kenya and he is also of course an expert on public finance management. The conversation this morning is this campaign by Oko Uchumi Coalition putting a stop to theft of public debt and the Oko Uchumi Coalition is asking you to sign that petition. Put a stop to theft of public debt and that's where we are asking so where is the public debt being stolen? How can we put a stop to this? What do we need to do? That's a conversation that we're continuing with shortly. This is Kenya's biggest conversation, The Situation Room on Spice FM and broadcasting as well online, 28 minutes to 9. This is The Situation Room, the only way to start your day. Spice up your life. 24-7, around the world, non-stop. This is Spice FM. This is something people need to understand. Your money, my money, equals our money. We cannot have your money is my, our money mm. and my money is my, my money. money. The only way to live your best life is to create a balance between work, love and play. The Adults in the Room is the only show on radio dedicated to educating Kenyans on how they can stay winning in life and in love. Text the word ADULT to 22840 to get the latest clips from Adults in the Room directly to your mobile phone. SMS ADULTS to 22840. Deep fried, chama, stew, breast, wings, gizzards, thighs, quarter, half, sausages. There's no greater meat than chicken. Knowing the sauce of your chicken, however, is key to truly enjoying your favorite dish. Tune in to Sugar and Spice from 11 a.m. with Yolanda Mulua and DJ Absolute to learn more about how Ken Chick is cuckoo about food safety, nutrition and taste from farm to family. Classic soul, R&B, smooth jazz, neo soul Light and rain nostalgic in Nairobi ballad. continues at 17, highs of 23 and lows of 15 today. It's partly sunny at 17 in Nakuru City, highs of 25 and lows of 14. In Yeri, it's raining as well at 17, 22 will be the high and lows of 14. Mombasa got the memo as well, it's raining at 27, highs of 31 and lows of 25. And we're looking at rain in Malindi at 26, highs of 30 and lows of 25. Okay, Kisumu is sunny at 23, highs of 28 and lows of 19. And it's sunny as well in Kakamega at 24, highs of 29 and lows of 17. Kampala is raining at 20, highs of 27 and lows of 18. And it's raining as well in Dar es Salaam at 27, highs of 30 and lows of 26. Lagos, mostly clear conditions at 26, highs of 33 and lows of 25. While we're looking at mostly cloudy conditions at 18 in Johannesburg with highs of 26 and lows of 15. It's mostly cloudy in Kinshasa at 23. We'll see highs of 31 and lows of 22. If I'm found guilty, there is no problem I'm willing to serve. I have no problem. Jails are meant for human beings. They say a society gets the leadership it deserves. Mm. If you have a corrupt 
crooked and rotten society like we have in Kenya, then of course they will get that kind of a leadership. I think the president should dissolve parliament. That's the best solution at this moment in time. Dissolve parliament. All of you go home. Yes, we all go home. How are we encouraging other people who might have new and creative ideas? Young people who are making money without any government help. They are just buying their own bundles. They are going on TikTok and making money. KRA is coming after them. Mm. I've been in parliament for 15 years. We have been unable to pass the gender law. And yet no presidential candidate is talking about it now. Because we are fake. The truth is, all the men refused to vote for that law. What did Sonko do to Pumwani from Maternity Hospital? Yeah, he with cleaned his it own up. money. Cleaned it with his own, own money. money. That was him as an individual. Yeah. Uh -huh. And I did not say he was cleaning his own money. I was saying he was cleaning... He cleaned it. <laughs> <laughs> Foot, mouth. Foot, <laughs> mouth. Eric. <laughs> okay. The Situation Room. Kenya's biggest conversation. Still continues on Mombasa this morning and we're also looking at the Southern Bypass for some reason just past that interchange. Uh, coming off Likoni Road, quite some uh, traffic there. Let us know what is going on if you're in that area. Lunga Lunga coming out from industrial area and Jugga Road still quite jam-packed uh, this morning. Langata Road as well. We're looking at traffic going towards the roundabout and Uhuru Highway also continues to take a hit as you're getting into the city. So we're looking at Huru Highway from the Nyaya Stadium roundabout all the way through to Westlands. In and outbound traffic, as you get into the CBD, it's going to get quite tight. Uh, coming off of Fika Super Highway, that continues just past survey out towards the Pangani underpass. We're still in traffic hour, folks. It's going to take some time to get out of this one. And the roads are slippery because of the rains that are, that are coming down. So please be careful of that. Let's talk on Spice FMKE on Twitter. Text 40127. So if you log on to www.showmax.com, you'll be able to get that free 14 days free trial for Showmax. And then after the end of the 14 day free trial, you're going to be able then to continue using whichever subscription option or package you chose. Okay. So you will see a button that says free trial 14 day. Click on the button. Go down. It opens a new page. It gives you, you give the details, your email address, put in a password. And then also you put in your mobile number You're in Kenya. It's optional. Put that. And then it tells you, okay, now select whatever option you want to go for. Showmax Mobile for 300 bob. Showmax 760. Showmax Pro Mobile 1,050 a month. Or Showmax Pro 2,100. But you're not paying now. You're only tr going for a free trial for 14 days. Get the free trial. Try it. And then after that, Ndu, mm -hmm. tell me. What? I'll pay for you. It's free. <laughs> I beg you, Joe. Spice up your life. Mature, intelligent talk every morning. Spice up yourself. Mornings done right. 94.4 Spice so FM, your Nairobi. Chumi Coalition is asking you to sign a petition and we'll tell you how to go on and sign that petition that says stop the theft of public debt. They have not put now, but I'm saying now. And you're saying stop, surely. It's not progressive. It's now, right, Irene? Yes. Yes. And Irene Otieno is the national coordinator at the National Taxpayers Association. She's with us in the studio. And joining us on video is Abraham Rugo. Dr. Abraham Rugo is a country manager for the International Budget Partnerships, KE. Irene, you explained how money is just getting lost left, right and center. And the various ways in which you could say, try and plug this. I want to come to you, Abraham. Listening to, I mean, all these things that we're talking about, it sounds to me more of it like being uh, a conversation around misallocation or misappropriation of budgets and poor oversight and poor controls in how then the money is being used it's it's it, it starts from that point so what did you budget for how are you using it did you agree on this did you apply it properly is that not so is that is that really directly about theft of the debt or is it something that can be stopped if we did public finance management better uh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Let me first of all uh, start by uh, you know, bringing it a bit closer. Uh, so across, uh, you initially, City had asked a question around 
what can citizens do? And I just wanted to say two things when I come to your question, uh, Eric. Uh, one is that uh, uh, many of us as citizens do not ask questions about sources of money. Uh, for instance, right now, there's a lot of conversation, of course, towards the coming election. Our politicians, both in government and outside government, are going around uh, the country campaigning and all that. A lot of those places, people actually do receive some money, some facilitation. Few ask questions, where is this money coming from? You know, How come just the other day, you know, uh, you were struggling with us, but now you have all this array, uh, array, 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 array of money? And the more many of us ask questions about, you know, uh, uh, how resources are being applied and how they are being utilized, the more there is pressure because, you know, it, it creates political pressure. I think the second one is also to educate ourselves uh, on the budget and what is entailed in there, you know. Uh, and this has to do bas with the, as basic services as the health center that you, you go to, the school that we, the schools that we go to, there's a capitation that is provided uh, uh, for resources. The agriculture services, uh, the trade and investment support that we receive, all these services that we go for in government, including even the police services, the security services, they are allocated a budget. And in the line item budgets, uh, uh, you know, those, those lines are available. And it's very easy to be able to say, uh, we know this is how much you have been allocated uh, for this kind of service. Uh, how have you utilized it? And how come this service was allocated as some money, but we don't see it? But let me come to your question. Yes, you're, you're right uh, uh, that there's a, there's a question around controls. But let me start by first saying, that even with the budget, so the way the budget is done over the years is that over the last, you know, um, uh, uh, is that when the budget is being done, there is a deficit. So there is a difference between the revenue that is expected mm -hmm. and the expenditure that, uh, that needs to happen. And expenditure, of course, is always higher. But what we have noticed, even during the year, when revenues targets are not met, the expenditure uh, levels still are increased upwards and therefore what happens is that the deficits have been growing within the year more than even at the start of the financial year and that leads more to uh, 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 and that, that's a fast check which mm -hmm. we think is critical you know we have told parliament and i think they did they did accept to that I mean, even the national treasury did accept to that recommendation that there needs to be only one supplementary budget within a year because what would happen is that a supplementary budget is done money is moved from this line item to that line item is moved to that that's one secondly is that there's a lot of expenses uh, that are done off the system. So there's an IFMI system, the Integrated Financial Management Information System, uh, that all procurement, all payments uh, are supposed to be done within it. Now, we understand that not all payments, not all procurement activities actually happen within that system. And there are all manner of reasons that sometimes are given. Internet was down, there was no power. And therefore, we had to pay. Uh, uh, so there is that. But there's a third one that is also uh, quite, quite, quite critical. And this has to do with uh, money that is collected in terms of, uh, and, and maybe we should have said that when public debt is procured, it becomes a revenue. So it becomes part of the revenues, that, you know, part of the money that the government has uh, for utilization. A lot of that money sometimes is actually utilized off the system. Mm. Uh, uh, and, and that's why, for instance, uh, let me use the classic case of Kimorel and Aror Dams, for instance, uh, where the discussion was that uh, already commitments had been made, uh, money had been, had, 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 been, had been spent, but no work was happening. On the, so there's a control side of things, uh, but there's also then the questions that have to do with the oversighting of why do resources have to be spent off the system year on year. The Auditor General raises them. Uh, 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 parliament, the, the institutions of Parliament, the National Assembly and the Senate have a big, have not have a big responsibility, have the sole responsibility as the representatives of Kenya uh, to be able to, uh, uh, to to raise. So you have loopholes that have to do with how revenue is collected and accounted for. Uh, then you have loopholes about how the expenditures and the inflation that we, we talk about of costs uh, and, and, and projects. But then you have the overall oversight of saying who is responsible for how the money in this particular uh, uh, ministry. And people need to take responsibility how money is spent in the Ministry of Health, money is spent in the Ministry of Agriculture, in, in, in the Ministry and the various departments uh, of agriculture. So it's a mix, uh, but the point that we don't want to miss is that there's a responsibility holder. There's somebody who has a public trust. Mm. Uh, in this case, uh, a, a big shoulder of it, of course, will fall uh, on the Treasury, but also uh, on the National Assembly mm. as you know, the key custodians uh, of that public trust 
uh, and oversight of how the resources are used. Abraham, in, in all of this, I mean, I hear what you're saying, and I think one of the biggest questions that then juts out is... Uh, is how, uh, because one of the things that keeps coming up is that, you know, citizens ought to ask questions. Citizens ought to give Correct. pushback, you know, ought to say that, you know, where is this money going? Should ask questions. So the question then is, how should this be done? And I often find, and I'm one of the biggest proponents for, um, for um, sticking out and saying, look, this is not right. And I, I really do believe that uh, institutions bow to pressure when it's applied in the right way. And we've seen this Correct. happen. We've seen this happen that, you know, a, 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 a lot of pressure can be given and then either something is done or at least at the very least, somebody will sit up and take notice. And that can usually only be done when the, the thing being presented is not ambiguous in nature, that it is tangible and people can understand. All right, if I don't make noise about this particular thing, the price of bread which I put on my table is directly affected. You see what I'm saying? So unless it has, it has presented itself in a manner that it affects the individual at a personal level and that you can then graduate that to community and say, hey, folks, what are we doing about that? It will be then be very difficult to get people to apply this pressure because the understanding has not been made clear. It's, you don't understand. All right, public debt, it sounds really fancy. But then how do I apply that to a situation in which I am currently? How does it affect my day to day? Mm -hmm. Because you have competing issues right now. Somebody's not going to wake up in the morning and say, okay, where do I go and apply pressure when I don't have food on my table? Right? I agree. And I there's agree. no there's the realization that, all right, some of these things that are happening are directly affecting this meal that you're out there looking for. So the question is how? In what spaces? How do people come together? How do these molecules then combine and say, let's get combustion? How do we do it? And I think a lot of times it's ambiguous in nature. Unless it becomes very real, it's difficult for people to push back. And we're saying that's one of the only solutions to this problem. I, 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 I completely agree with you, Ndu. Uh, one of the things that I worry is that we seem to become, be becoming numb to the reality. Mm. So far that, first of all, in the last one or two years, one, one year, the cost of, of, of living has increased because taxes have gone up. And the reason why the taxes have gone up is because uh, we have a huge uh, debt bill uh, to be able to, to, to pay back. You know, like, for instance, think about this kind of current financial year. We're going to spend about a trillion, which basically you're saying is about 30 percent of the total budget, uh, 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 including what we, is planned to be borrowed. Uh, and also which equates to about 70% of mm. the total revenue, you know. So for every 100 shillings the country makes, it's going to be spending 70 shillings. So we've seen that reflected on the on the cost of gas. We've seen that reflected in the cost of fuel. We've seen that reflected on the cost of, of, of flour and, and things like that. We've seen... I know the cost of food going up because we are importing food, the food, food that we produce here as maize goes bad. So I don't think it can get more real than it has already gotten. Mm. But then we have spaces that we seem not to be maximizing on. One of those spaces is that uh, we seem to have taken for granted that the roles we give to our members of parliament, to our senators, to our MCAs, mm. uh, the fact that they come around with a couple of goodies around here, uh, uh, we, we, we take it for granted because that's a space, that's a democracy that we have structured for ourselves because we can't find solutions outside what we have created for ourselves so we have those spaces and for instance we have worked uh, i mean i've been in this space for a couple of years mm. and we have sent memorandums and memorandums and memorandums and every time we have seen communities come around their their health facility around their school around the dam and the water projects uh, in their area around the roads being done in the areas through their residents association i think we take for granted these spaces uh, and they, 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 we assume it is the responsibility of my neighbor mm. uh, to, to know to act on the road that is bad. So, so there are spaces for utilization. I mean, for engagement, uh, but we using them as we ought to. But every time we use them, the people listen. You know, the, 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 but there is a problem that I think is bigger than what we are discussing here and do. And I don't think I have a, a, a magic bullet to mm. solve it. Is the fact that when you have a breakdown in the rule of law. Because we've even had cases that have been gone to court, as you are aware, mm -hmm. uh, and determined on, but they were not action on. So I think that that creates a lot of, uh, you know, uh, empathy. 
uh, uh, apathy, you know, in people saying, okay, fine, if things are going to remain the same, despite my engagement. But that does not mean we give up. Mm. Uh, we continue to engage. In that. So, so what I wanted to say is that there are spaces of participation, there are institutions of representation that we have elected for ourselves and determined for ourselves. Let's use them. Let's say these things, because I don't think the situation can get you know, is already dire. It is likely to get more dire because taxes are likely to increase in the coming year because of the kind of service of debt that we need to to meet. But Dr. Rugo, Dr. Rugo, if I yes. may just if I may just chime in, you know, when we talk of apathy, we somehow seem to be taking the view that people more or less just give up and become quiet observers. They are not. People become. They are not. They are not quiet observers. People no, actually. they become participants. <laughs> You see, the, the, the reason why in my mind these problems seem to, we just seem to be cyclical, we just go around in circles. They observe, they do due diligence, they try to observe the law, they see it doesn't work. Now the apathy that we see is they stop doing what they were doing before, but they do something else. And they participate at their level. Mm. They will now join the very thing that they were fighting against. Now they will not see it as that. They will find reason to explain, mm. but that is exactly what we... You see, the essence of the money that politicians give portrays this really well. Correct. What are you taking 50 shillings for? The, the, the question you would ask. You, you may not think that 50 shillings is significant, but for many people, that 50 shillings represents something fundamental for that particular day. And why is it? Because their lives are based on a day-to-day -day existence. So... Until and unless some of these things that we talk about and some of these things that we propose can address the mindset and the understanding of the majority of our people, which is basically, how do I survive today? Any discussion? I, 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 please go I ahead, Dr. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, please. I'm listening to you. Yeah, so I, I mean, I completely agree. And that's the kind of apathy that I'm saying. And I started with that point of few of us question how is this goodness of the politician and yet it has a very direct impact you know we have ceased for instance to almost stop worrying about unemployment and therefore uh, it seems that i want actually to just make a, a, you know a, a living out of, i make a living out of it you know there's even discussion about okay fine it's a thief but it's our thief mm -hmm. you know at least he comes and shares what he you know uh, uh, you know uh, uh, has, has, has taken and and gives back and almost there's an expectation even within our society which i think is becoming more and more worse that when somebody gets into an, 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 an office in, in public service at whatever level, whether representative or appointed, is supposed to bring back goodies to, to us. I think those are the things I'm saying that we we must start engaging with them. As I've told you, uh, in, in our small, small way, especially partners within the Uchumi Coalition, we are trying to bring this uh, this awareness that we need to actually engage to solve problems that basically will address in the long term. Because when the dispensary works, it's more important that the dispensary works and functions well. It's more important that the schools works and functions well than that I get a handout of a thousand or two thousand shillings to go and help my my, my sister or my brother or my cousin who is sick. Mm. Uh, because because in the end, that's what we should be pushing for. Irene, mm. so the Oko Uchumi Coalition is asking people um, to sign on to this petition. Okay. So how do you sign on to the petition, and then and then what? Um. The, the And then what is what uh, I will start on? And I think that just takes on from what uh, Rugo has mentioned. And Rugo can handle the, the signing of the petition. Um, we have recommendation there. And on this particular petition, there are key recommendations that we have uh, uh, highlighted there. And those are the recommendations that we are asking citizens to rally with us around. A critical one we have mentioned, I know, and that, that one uh, is a bit uh, mixed reactions towards this, that the CS in currently in charge of that docket is someone we are asking uh, a resignation about. But I know the concern would be this is an individual. And even when you look at the debt stock, it has not been accumulated only within his time. Mm. So again, it does show that it's not a, an issue of a, around a person, but the systems. But the question then has become that we have asked within uh, his tenure for many things. Evidence has been tabled by civil society players, by academia, by several players, but that has not been able to, to push. So what we are calling on the critical one currently for us is a resignation mm -hmm. of the officer in charge of Treasury currently. And uh, Rugo can speak to the... So that, is that the main thing? So sign the petition demanding the resignation of National Treasury Cabinet CS Ukuriatani. 
Uh, that is one one of the things we are looking at. But okay. as you can, uh, as we had earlier shared, it's a raft of measures we are looking at. Mm. We have also looked at the issue of budgeted corruption, where we are saying that at the point, I know we have been making a lot of noise initially as players. I wouldn't want to call it noise. We have been giving very constructive, <laughs> very, <loud. laughs> very, very constructive, constructive. yes, <laughs> engagement yeah. that we need to look at the budget. And for us, we were like, so long as there is a, a, a health center or there's a hospital, then we are happy. But we were aren't looking at at what cost yeah, has this health center been put here. there. So now we are looking at, uh, can we look at the issues of budgeted corruption? So that's another area we are looking at. Okay, so directly, mm -hmm. once I sign on to this petition, what happens next? I mean, when does the petition close and then what happens? What What's the immediate thing that I'm going to see? To see, I signed and I can see the results. And I'm pushing it clearly to my uh, to my <laughs> colleague, Rugo, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> my senior, <laughs> to answer on the, the way forward on that. Okay. Yeah, uh, uh, th th thanks. I think the, the, the critical piece is that uh, the signing of the petition, this is a political process, so the signing of the petition is putting pressure that, first of all, we need to see responsibility being taken. Secondly, uh, that uh, the debt registers and the transparency that needs to be on how much money has come, where has it been spent, who have been the beneficiaries, that is critical. Uh, there's also the, the it, it also has aspects, uh, for instance, of uh, you know the role uh, that the syndicated loans, the euro bonds have been playing, uh, and and all you know uh, questions around that. So basically, yeah, and and the, and the questions will go to different institutions. Some of them definitely uh, will go will, will will go to parliament. What should you see once you sign? I uh, will wait and see. You know, basically, this is uh, I mean, as you say, this is something we have been at uh, for a long time in terms of asking questions, raising memorandums. Uh, we are also sending memorandums, for instance. Uh, uh, to, today is the last day to send memorandums uh, to the National Assembly around the budget policy statement. We are raising the same questions uh, with the National Assembly on the same week. We raised the same questions last week with the Senate. So basically, they have, okay, they have Abraham, different but actors playing. Here is a direct system. question then. What does my signature add? It has the political weight. So you'll use that to say 1,000 people are behind what we are saying? Correct. Because this, this, these are matters that are affecting all these Kenyans. And uh, one of the things, for instance, we have been hoping is that, for instance, people send memorandums uh, on different questions around, you know, uh, budget. So this is just one of those processes that says, look here, guys, things are getting dire. Can we do something? Okay. So how do people get to sign on to this petition? So Oko Ochumi has got different uh, 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 social media. They are all under Oko Ochumi, uh, Oko Ochumi .com, uh, Oko Ochumi Kenya on Twitter, on, on Facebook. Uh, basically, just log in there and then you get all the details. All right. So just log on to any of those platforms, get the details, sign on to the platform. But more and more, I'm sure that the bigger thing also you want to do is create that awareness among the public, that there's a conversation that we need to have around the debt that is uh, has been borrowed on our behalf and how it's being applied and being used in the country. Yeah, I mean, and I could not overemphasize it, uh, uh, Eric and Tim, that guys, uh, this is money that is borrowed in our name. All debt is future tax, so we will pay for it. So if it is used well, we will pay for it while we enjoy the benefits. If it is not used well, we will pay for it while seeing nothing of it. And, it, and that's why it's called a debt burden. In fact, mm -hmm. the Constitution uses that very language. The, 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 the burden and benefits shall be shared by current and future generations. So, so this is a matter that affects you, affects me, affects our children. Uh, and, and therefore, we must, we must worry ourselves as to where our money is being used. And in totality, by the way, mm -hmm. is that to say that the more we borrow, it means that there's also an issue about, you know, how we are budgeting. And therefore, it's about how all public resources are being utilized mm. uh, in that sense. Because the services attached to them are the services we should be getting. Thank you. Thank you very much. Dr. Abra Abraham Rugo is a country manager for International Budget Partnerships Kenya. He's been joining us on the line. And Irene Otieno in, with us in the studio is the national coordinator of the National Taxpayers Association. Thank you very much for joining us. Come again soon. Thank you, Thank you for having us. And the next one as well, Dr. Rugo, come again soon and be in the studio next time. I will. I will come. I will come, Rick. Asante. The conversation is around putting a stop to theft of public debt. This is what the Okoa Uchumi Coalition, a coalition of civil society actors, are saying. Look, let's have a conversation about our public debt and let's put a, debt, a, a stop to the theft of this money that's being borrowed in our name. Making sure that it's also being used appropriately and in the right manner.
This is Kenya's biggest conversation, the Situation Room. Keep you right here for more conversations coming up in the next hour. Good morning. It's 9 a.m. Spice up your life. The latest news from around the world. 94.4 Spice FM. This is Newswire, I'm Dennis Aceto. If you want to get in-person services from the government offices, make sure you are vaccinated against COVID-19. These as the health system are maintained that the government will only offer in-person services to those that have been vaccinated. The CS said that while the government isn't forcing anyone to get vaccinated as it is their choice, they have the responsibility to protect those that have been vaccinated from exposure to COVID-19 virus. On Omicron variant, the CS said that it has not been detected in the country, though his ministry is putting in place measures to ensure that the country Country is prepared for when it is reported. These, as a meeting with the Council of Governors, is expected to take place today to assess the county government's preparedness. Meanwhile, Rwanda has reported six cases of Omicron variant of COVID-19, joining a list of countries that have reported positive cases of the variant. And all three U.S. authorized COVID-19 vaccines appear to be significantly less protective against the newly detected Omicron variant of the coronavirus in laboratory testing, but a booster dose likely restores most of the protection, according to a newly released study. The study from researchers at Massachusetts General Hospital, Harvard and MIT, that has not yet been peer-reviewed tested blood samples who received the Moderna, Johnson & Johnson and Pfizer-BioNTech vaccines against a pseudovirus engineer to resemble the Omicron variant. The researchers found low to absent antibody neutralization of the variant from the regular regimens of all the three vaccines, two shots of Moderna or Pfizer-BioNTech vaccines, or one of Johnson & Johnson single-dose vaccine. But the study found that the blood from recent recipients of an additional booster dose exhibited potent neutralization of the variant. The scientists also suggested that Omicron is more infectious than previous variants of concern, including about twice as trans Transmissible as the currently dominant Delta variant, which may soon be overtaken by Omicron. Here at Standard, we continue to urge you to get out there, get vaccinated, so we could all win the fight against COVID-19. Kuala County has 5.6% of people living with HIV AIDS, a figure close to 5.7% of the total population of those infected by HIV AIDS across the country. Sandra Shivole from the Coalition on Violence Against Women, Koval, said the victims were children and mothers. According to Shivole, about 200,000 people affected do not use antiretroviral drugs. She urged the Kuala County government and various stakeholders to put in place more strategies to prevent further transmission of the virus. The government and private sector partners have initiated a process to sensitize businesses and youth in Nyanza about online business through the Ajira Digital Program. David Okeyu from Homa Bay County Government, Kenya Private Sector Alliance Deputy Chief Executive Officer Martha Cheruto and Ajira Digital Program Director Ehud Gashugo launched the program in Homa Bay County. Okeyu has urged traders to start selling their wares online with Cheruto saying that the initiative would enable young people to get jobs online. Gashugo said the aim of the plan is to improve the economy by enabling traders to sell their products locally and internationally. Our objective is to really around increasing the number of digital workers, but more importantly, increasing adaptation of digital solutions by businesses, where then uh, properly our country is the leading African destination for local and international companies. We have seen this happening in other geographies in the world, and we have every reason, and we have been very confident, making sure that the businesses can trust working with the rest. They can trust working with platforms. The second thing that we do is access to infrastructure, the internet, the devices, the working apps. After Ohoma Bay, the officers will conduct the training in Kisumu County. Now, the Kenya Maritime Authority has noted that Lamu County has recorded the highest number of marine deaths in the entire coast region this year. At least 11 people have died following boat accidents on different dates in the Indian Ocean between January and December. KMA figures show that another 166 people were rescued through the authorities' immediate action in collaboration with the county's disaster management unit and private operators. Mombasa. 
Kwale, Tanariva, Kilifi and Taita Taveta counties recorded the deaths of only 10 people while those who were saved were less than 20 people. Now, Congolese Roomba is among at least nine new entries on UNESCO's representative list of the intangible cultural heritage of humanity. UNESCO is making its 2021 designations this week, recognizing cultural heritage ranging from Arabic calligraphy to falconry to Nordic clinker boat traditions. Congolese Roomba was named to the list. The Democratic Republic of Congo and the Republic of Congo jointly bring the UNESCO to recognize the music and dance, which helped energize people in those countries to shake off colonial rule by Belgium and France respectively in Congo in 1960. This is Newswire, Dennis Aceto. Ninety-four point four Spice FM, Nairobi. There is traffic on Uhuru Highway this morning and it's getting into the city center. Coming just past the nearest stadium roundabout, heading out onto Haile Selassie and then past into Westlands. That still continues. Mombasa Road also in and outbound, especially around in Maradima. There is a clog up there, folks, and it doesn't look pretty at all. The southern bypass where there was traffic before, that is getting much better now. And we're still seeing some action on Langata Road as well as the other side of the city in industrial area. That's quite jam-packed. Take us up highway looking a little bit better, just a smidgen, but still quite a lot of traffic there so we're going to take it as it comes let us know hope nothing gets too out of whack let us know if it does spice of mke on twitter text on 40127 this is the situation room the home of hard-hitting political commentary and penetrating insights about the state of the nation. This is a talk radio experience like no other. The Situation Room, a place for hard truths, debates, and elevated conversations. The Situation Room, witty, political, engaging, deep, controversial. In the room, we have C.T. Muga, researcher, academic, seasoned political observer, a fountain of wisdom in these politically uncertain times. Ndu Oko, Nigerian by birth, Kenyan by choice, communications expert, pan-Africanist, a truth seeker and believer in people power, and Eric Latin. Agent provocateur, the man in the chair, seasoned journalist, news hound, a man who believes in punching up, not down. This is the Situation Room. The it's only seven way minutes to... after nine. This is Kenya's biggest conversation, the Situation Room. We're getting into the final hour of the show today. And uh, it's the 15th day of December 2021. What are we going to do? We're going to hear the day's proverb from City Muga. Mwenye shoka hakosi kuni. Mwenye shoka hakosi kuni. Yes. Sinivo. Should translate buena. Oh, sorry. That's what you meant by that thing you were doing. Uh -huh. Understand. The owner of the axe does not lack firewood. Well, directly translated very well indeed. Merci beaucoup. Mm. I have good teachers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You are a muhenga. So are that? you then saying... Sounds say like that another that insult. There <laughs> <laughs> you on a roll, eh? We'll another doing. insult. So, <laughs> sure. uh, I mean, why <laughs> don't you contextualize it with <laughs> the, the discussion <laughs> we're having earlier on in the, first, in, in the second hour of the, hour of the show. Uh. So what acts would you say a politician has mm. and what firewood does it provide for them? Mm. Or what acts does someone of influence or somebody who has means have and what firewood does it provide for them? <laughs> Because a question that is actually being asked among the many questions being asked is, mm. if indeed this had happened to someone who was not a public figure, wasn't known, and when you're a public figure, especially if you're a member of parliament, it is assumed by many citizens of this country that you have money. Mm. It is assumed. So the, the whole conversation here is saying that the judiciary looked and considered the influence and the position in society that this person has. It's being heavily implied, yes. It's being heavily implied. How so, though? I don't know, because you, I, I'm looking at that <laughs> whole tree. I mean, I mean, the whole... The examples that were given by the callers were good. They mm. were excellent. Mm. But unfortunately, Amani's examples, they all ended up in murder. Yeah, there were cases of murder. 
Yes. The, so re- the, the dead person was not withdrawing the case. No, it's the families who were withdrawing the case. Mm. You see? And again, there is the assumption and the presumption, because this is the thing about the communication age. Everybody's a doctor, everybody's a lawyer, everybody is a, is a psychologist, of course. E- everybody's everything. Yes, yes. Mm. The question that then lays heavily on the minds of people, uh, which we cannot run away from, that if it's front and center in the conversation is, what if, because we're talking about restitution that is being applied here, what if it was somebody who did not have the means to be able to do this? Would then this application be considered? What well, if the, what if the individual stood the ground stood grounds and said, you know what, actually, I uh, something else ought to be done. Let him face uh, the the full letter of the law. What if it was somebody who was not in a position to do this? Would we have seen a different conversation? And that is what now mm. has taken up residence in the minds of many people today, saying mm. that okay, it seems as though if I don't have the means, then I would have had to face the law. But yes, that is the logical side of things. Yes, now. If, you, if, let's even say, that this case had gone to its full logical conclusion, as City would say, <laughs> and the magistrate found the MP guilty of this charge of attempted murder mm-hmm. and said, I sentence you to X months in prison or this amount... In fines. In fines. Mm. Okay? And the amounts would have been enough to buy an apartment, enough to pay for medical assistance for DJ Evo for X number of years. Okay? Now, if you're a poor person, if you are not able to raise that fine, you'll go to jail. So it's not direct. So what if you did not have, if you didn't have, you'd go to jail? What if you're able to raise, if you raise, you don't go to jail? It is like that. And the, that, that, that's the law, by the way. Yes. So, so are you saying that the option now provides for preferential treatment? No, it's just the law. Yeah, it's, it's, that's no, how I'm it telling is. you that the, the way it is presented in the minds of people right yes, now, you yeah. cannot run away from that. That, that is what people well, are I'm, I'm, in a, I'm in agreement that with that you. That is what is, is, is laying the stake for a lot of but people now. But that's what we're saying. The saying. people then should also just consider it that way. You want people to now consider <laughs> yes, at this should point. Consider, should consider <laughs> mm, mm. that if he had gone and he had been found guilty and he had been sentenced and the punishment was pay all these things. If you don't, you'll go to jail. But we know would have been able to pay and he don't have gone to jail. Mm. Would they have said, oh, this man has just been left off the hook. This man, what if it was another? No, it's... You because know, they would have seen the process yes. play out. They would have seen the process play out and then they would have placated folks to at least a point because you said, okay, we saw this, then take the course of justice. No, but this what is... people are seeing, <laughs> I'm telling you that you have to look at what people are seeing it from. It's the fact that Babu that did not go to the court for many times. It seems the times. process was cut short and all he had to do was flash some money about and say that, you know, okay, well, I've shown remorse and I have some, I'm able to sort it out. That's what it appears to people. That if you have, even before it goes into the judicial process, process yeah. that if you have you can cut all this short by saying you know what i'm sorry and here i'm able to do one two three so let's sort this out do you know why we have court processes i'm not saying you don't know mm. i'm asking a rhetorical question mm. is so that the very thing that you so eloquently described is actually seen okay you can witness a process being followed but then at what point as we say do we see justice being actually done mm. It must be seen to be done, and then it must be done. So at what point? And at what point does the baying of blood become a baying of, for blood, or is it just a calling for justice? Or is it the formation of a lynch bob? Or the creation of a culture where something in the public domain becomes akin to what? The formation of a lynch mob who want only one form of what they consider to be the adequate justice. Now, surely, if we are to discuss this thing openly, is it Babu Awena's supposed notoriety that is coming to haunt him? Because he's somebody who's been in the public domain mm. for very many things which are not considered right. When you talk to the person, a very logical, very sane individual, very, someone who explains himself very clearly and somebody who actually understands where he's about. So, when you talk about someone like Babu Awena, mm. for whom I think he's a contemporary of probably very many people who are now commenting about this, could you then argue that Babu Wena is in fact, maybe you call him a perpetrator. What if I refer to him as a victim? Because what political purpose does someone, Babu Wena is the example, people like Babu Wena, people like Echesa, people who have 
sort of like made violence sexy. People who have attempted to make rowdiness and, 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 and in the political domain sexy by saying unutterable things. By Remember, we talked to, ask, to Task, the Secretary General of the ODM party, on something similar. Mm. Your political rally, and because you're pandering to the public, you say things which you shouldn't say and you, say, you shouldn't utter as a leader. So are these the demands or are these people acting on their own volition? in a manner that they think will serve their purposes, whatever purposes they seem? Or have they been doing this and have gotten away with it for so long that they didn't think there were consequences? So, because it is a situation where we're talking about politicians or people in the political realm, are they victims of the influence and the socialization of this particular course of life that they have chosen? Or are they just people who are willfully just doing things because they know they can get her away. When they're doing and these things, are they under the influence of, this, of other people or are they acting by themselves? Was the influence, was, the, was, was this system created by the political class or was the system created by everybody? Uh, it's, uh, everybody contributes, really. Okay. So we have a group of people that are called politicians that yes. we look at and we say, you know, no, 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 no. This person, the way they are behaving, it's impunity. This person, the way they behave, in fact, they should not be uh, holding that kind of office. They didn't put themselves there. They were put there. Very true. Second, we have had all these cases of politicians who have been taken to court on charges one to the other. Somebody is accused of having stolen billions of shillings. They have a case in court. Somebody is accused of having done many, many other things. Cases in court. Fraud. Cases in court. And yet when they come back to the public, the public does not remind them about those cases in court. The public is still pointing a finger at the DPP and the judiciary and saying, but this person should not be here talking to us. You should, be in, you should have jailed him. And this is two days after he came, you went to see him. You called him Mweshimiwa. You received the money that he was giving. And then when you sit back now, you're having a general conversation, not necessarily mentioning politician uh, Eric Latif, but all oh, politicians of this ilk. You're saying, but this should be in court. Where is the society in this? Let me bring back back home. So we have the case of Babu Owino, okay? There's all this hue and cry and public outcry of, oh, he's been left off the hook, blah, blah, blah. There are those who will say he still has another case to answer, blah, blah, blah. Babu Owino has expressed interest to um, vie again for the seat that he currently holds. Okay? So the question then starts going into, this person should not be allowed to actually vie in the next general election. He should be stopped. We have a chapter 6 of the Constitution on Leadership and Integrity. We have a law called the Leadership and Integrity Act. We have the other pieces of legislation that talk about leadership and integrity and faces cases, facing cases in court and nomination of political party candidates and nomination of all those who are vying for elections by IEBC. This person should be, not be allowed to vie. But if, there are, if they go through that whole process and they're on the ballot, are they going to get zero votes? Who's the ultimate custodian of all these ethos that we talk about? The morality that we stand here every day talking about your oh, morality. You know, this person has broken the moral code of the society. Who is the ultimate custodian? The public. You vote them back in? The public. Yeah. The public is the ultimate. And the public are, in fact, if you are talking about licensure, they are the body that actually offers the final licensure in such matters. So if they tolerate it, Damn the law. And the politician, being a wily individual, will understand that this one I can get away with. Mm. This one, they will understand. You know why? Because the public will not hold you accountable. Because if the public did, case in point, mm. just small mention. Mm. Do you know why, it, one, of the, one of the many reasons why politicians believe and feel and know that they must dish out money to the public? Because the public expects it. Mm. So, it's an interesting relationship because they understand. If you can understand this, then tell me why it is you can't understand other things that relate to a to relationship. The same public. Uh, precisely. So are we saying that this seeming boundary that has been drawn or created between what would be the privileged and the underprivileged, that the privileged or those who are um, you know, doing a lot better in society have 
that at their fingertips they can do what they want as they will. This line that has been drawn between the rich and the poor, between the opportuned and the unopportuned, is being fueled or is being made even thicker or more legible by the attitude of the public, that you continue to make these people think that they can do what they want because when they come back to you as a public and say, give me this position, you give it to them. So you make it seem as though, you know what, we are endorsing your behavior. We are endorsing the way in which you behave. Anything that you come and do later, and you, we are actually giving you the platform upon which you can behave in this manner. Because if we didn't, that would be a direct indictment on you and say, we're not giving you this, this position, we're not giving you our vote because we don't like the way in which you behave. When we give you the vote, we're basically saying, we are all right with the way in which you behave. Is that what we're saying? That the public, by virtue of the fact that they give you your vote continuously, that they're basically endorsing your behavior, whatever it is. Yeah. And so now that attitude that you have later, whereby you say, all right, well, I can do what I want and uh, I don't have to face any kind of punishment. And even if I do, I'm going to be able to dole out some cash and sort that out. That the only reason why you can behave that way is because the members of the public who are right now shouting at you on social media, they're the ones who gave you an entrance into the door in the first place. They're the ones who said, it's okay. This thing that you do and we make noise about, it's funny, we like it. We're all right with it because we've given you our vote. That's what we are saying. Yes. Yeah, that's what we're saying. All this noise so that you're seeing. So we should be making seeing. noise because it's uh, pretentious in nature. Completely. Mm. It's hypocrisy. It's disingenuous. <laughs> Total. All this noise that you're seeing people making on social media. Oh, no. I mean, what kind of precedents? And even perhaps people start getting, you know, all academic kind of precedent is being set here. I mean, what shall happen then in case of... This is all hot air, my friend. It's all hot air. There's a certain feeling that people have about this particu particular individual. They're looking at him. Many of the people who are complaining are contemporaries of this particular MP. Same age group, went to university around the same time. In fact, I went there, I left him. He was still in the university studying, I don't know what, two degrees in uh, actuary, two, I don't know what degrees in law, degree in what. He's just a perennial student. I left him in... Now here he is, he's an MP, he has money, he's walking around with a gun, he's licensed to carry a firearm, he's doing this and the other, and even despite going to court, he's out there. There's that feeling of, hey, this person, there's that feeling. And that feeling is now being carried on into many other things of, oh, there should be justice delivered, justice being seen to be delivered on this particular person. Yet, in the very end, after that person goes and sits down, they will come back and they will see Babu Owino. And they, ah, Babu, no, I remember. When I was in university, you were there. You, I voted for you. I voted. Same, same people who are complaining. Same people. If they are from Embakasi, is it north or, or west? They will go in. East. east. <laughs> it's east. If they go to Embakasi East and they are voters in Embakasi <laughs> East, South east. They, they are likely to go and vote for the same Jamaa, Babu Owino. It's all Makelele. Now you'll see the next conversation is, should Babu Owino be allowed to contest in next year's general election? Should he? Well, you know, that now, as I, I say from time to time, mm. if that matter is before our courts, it provides us with yet another opportunity mm. to understand how the law is actually operationalized and how it works. You know, the theory of these are the rights, this is what the law says, this is what ought to happen, mm. it's all good and well, and it makes for good listening. But when you have a case and you see the outcome and people respond, it may not be obvious, but we are participating in operationalizing the law, even with our protests, even with our views, even with our positions. That's precisely what we are doing. Mm. And, you know, there's this discussion and argument that is often put forth with regards to the purveyors of justice and those who stand between us and anarchy, the judiciary. But do they take into account public opinion? Do they take into account of the public? They do. Mm. They most certainly do. The human element, the societal element in operationalizing the law, I believe they do. Because this very discussion that we are having wouldn't have taken place if that consideration hadn't been there. Hmm. Mm. In terms of upholding the law, as I think about it now, and I, I think the manner in which human beings operate, that the desire, unfortunately, 
that where we are as a society, that the desire would be that if you are in such a position, your desire would be that if you did have that sway position and uh, money at your disposal, that you would want the same kind of judgment to be given to you. Unfortunately... Leave alone the people who are, as we are making noise about it now, saying that actually, no, we didn't see the judicial process play out. We didn't see that, uh, um, you know, amends are being made. We didn't see any of that. But if the, f the script was flipped, it's unfortunate that we are demanding so much in terms of sanitization of the entire process. But uh, if the script was flipped, many, many people, had they been in the position of power and money, would have taken the same position that has been granted to Bob Owino. Actually, you know the thing about hypocrisy? It doesn't even allow you to see it for what it actually is. It enables you to be self-righteous, mm. and it enables you to divorce yourself completely from other alternate realities that may be present for you to view and understand if you so wished. But it allows you to take a position which is lofty, a position that is righteous, a position that makes you better mm. than the person that you are pointing fingers at. Now, it's also part of the trends that we have acquired as Kenyans Every time we lift our voices to condemn corruption, do you think we condemn it with a view to understanding and even asking ourselves what part we also play in contributing to the corruption of society? No, we don't. And it's always corruption about somebody else who seems to have acquired infinitely more mm -hmm. than we have acquired and seems said to be acquiring more. So what you hinge your discussion on is what you consider the fraudulent nature mm -hmm. by which they have acquired it. Do we take into account what we do in whatever small measure? Do we? No, we don't. So that self-examination and reflection that requires somebody to actually understand that, you know, this thing may not be quite what it is. Yeah, if, if you don't allow your mind to participate in it, of course you'll take the lofty view that this person has actually done something wrong without asking. The person who pronounced this particular edict, do you ask the question, do you think this magistrate actually took all these things into account? Do you think this magistrate actually understood, understood the, the, the law and the implications the, and of, the import of it? Mm. You would have people who said yes, and you would have people who said no. You would have <laughs> you would by nature of the fact that human beings yeah. think in the way that they do. You but, will have those who will say, "Well, it's possible that this magistrate was no. influenced in one way or another." You will have both sides of the argument. Let's get to the phone lines. Zero seven one nine zero one two six hundred Boniface in Kisumu. Good morning. Good good morning to you. How are you? Very well, thanks. Yes, yes. Uh, I wanted to make a, a, a contribution to the topic. Mm. Yes, and uh, uh, I, I wanted to educate you people a bit on this case. Eh? Mm. Um, murder cases or homicide cases mm. are complex cases. And um, when these cases are before the court, mm. there the dy dynamics that come to them. Mm. When a case is being handled, um, a case is being handled on a wide range of issues. Mm. So we are looking uh, at the person mm. who has been offended, and we are also looking at the rights of the offender. Mm. Uh, for example, uh, if, uh, for example, uh, Babuino shot the DJ. Um, it was not an instant trigger. Mm. The issues which uh, were there before the trigger was pulled. So that is before the court. Mm -hmm. um, there is the way the law looks at um, what was it was it worth it for Babu Wino to have reacted that way. Mm. But going forward. We, we want to we want to serve justice. That is what the magistrate did. And we have, if we are serving justice, we are serving justice for pro prosperity. And um, even though this is uh, issues which are under the penal code, it is not a civil issue. But there is an, an element of civil uh, civil way of handling a case mm. that was brought in, and the way it was brought in here uh, to my to my, to my best considered opinion, I think the judge was, I mean, the magistrate was partial enough in the way she delivered the, the judgment. Did you say that the judge so, was so, partial? So, so, just, just, just a minute. This is, this, is, 
this is what I'm saying, eh? Mm. Um, the person who took Babo Wino to the court made an application that he was no longer interested. Mm -hmm. That notwithstanding, if it is a case which is under the penal court, the DPP has the jurisdiction to consider whether to, draw, to withdraw the case or not to withdraw the case. The case was actually taken to court by the DPP. The, the DPP is the one who took the case. Yes, yes, yes. No, I'm, I want to give you a full scenario so that you understand. I let's, know that. Let, okay. Let's start with the, with the proper scenario. The DPP took the case to court, not DJ Evolve. Yes, yes. That's mm -hmm. what I'm saying. But, I'm, you know, I'm just trying to widen my point so that you, you get both, both context. Okay. Yes. So, in this case, the DPP took the, the, the case to the court. And the person who was shot at made an application that I want this case to be withdrawn. Mm. So what does it do to the case? It crashes a certain level of evidential threshold that the DPP is going to use to prosecute this case. Mm -hmm. So considering that, the DPP might not have the full capacity to prosecute this case to its logical conclusion. Mm -hmm. So the DPP will look at uh, why, what is informing uh, this client to withdraw this case. That is, this is somebody who is not dead, he still have a livelihood. Mm -hmm. And he is down, he can't find for himself. I mean, what he is stating as the reason as to why he is withdrawing this case, perhaps I'm not, uh, I'm not privy to the, 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 the smaller details, but I presume he must have mentioned that, uh, you know, Babo Wino is willing to uh, at least uh, do for me this, do for me this, do for me this, do for me this. And in the eye of the court, what they are looking at is, this person is not dead. This person has to have a livelihood. Mm. So this one, it pushes us to now, what is the ultimate? Uh, if a case is concluded, it is either they are win or there's a lose. So for criminal cases, it is always a win for the state or a lose for the state because these are cases which are being prosecuted on behalf of an individual by the state. Okay. So, Boniface, what's, what's, your, what's the point? You're, you're, avoid, you're widening the point. Now, now land this plane. I'm widening the point. Okay. So, let me, let me get to the, to the point. Mm -hmm. We are talking about restitution. That is punishment. So, punishment is being considered in a wide range. What the learned magistrate did is there is part of an element of punishment from Babuino. The forfeiture of the of, of the of the apartment mm. is punishment. Whether you want to consider it as punishment enough. Mm. So in, in your is, in that, your books that's a, that's a debate for another day, just a minute. <clears throat> and mm. the magistrate is also looking at it. This punishment is also enough to give livelihood the other side are you getting me actually so, i'm not because no, not really. I, I i i am trying why to why get you not, why you, not getting you you me? lost yes. me somewhere you're talking about restriction we are talking about punishment all those and things we've admit, heard and and uh they are, they are facts that are, they're, they're facts the that are out already. there already in, in on the table and they're in the public domain yes, yes. so what 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 is the you know, what is your point are you saying that this is okay by you or is it not okay by you in my own considered opinion, I think it was it, it was a partial judgment. Partial uh, meaning not complete or partial I mean, meaning impartial. that the magistrate impartial. took side? Impartial. Okay. Impartial. Okay, impartial. Yeah, impartial. Okay. So it's a fair judgment? Uh, according to me. Okay. Based okay. on the scenario, mm. I think it is a fair judgment. Okay. okay. Thank you very yes. much, Boniface.
Okay. Asante Thank you. sana. 0719012600. Let's hear from you. It's 26 minutes to 10. This is Kenya's biggest conversation. We are discussing that matter that's outlined the public domain. And now we even push it further. So with all these hue and cry and all the reaction in the public domain, is it about the public then sitting back and saying, if this person is presented, presents themselves for re-election, should they be allowed to contest an election? Not just him. Or then the, let's just expand this. All the politicians or all the individuals who, have face, who are facing cases in court, they haven't been concluded, they have whatever stage they are at, should we be allowing such people to contest an election? We know, yes, so far the law allows them to. But should we be saying, no, 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 we draw a line at some point. How do we draw the line? It's 25 to 10. This is The Situation Room, the only way to start your day. Spice up your life. If I'm found guilty, there is no problem I'm willing to serve. I have no problem. Jails are meant for human beings. They say a society gets the leadership it deserves. Mm. If you have a corrupt, crooked and rotten society like we have in Kenya, then of course they will get that kind of a leadership. I think the president should dissolve parliament. That's the best solution at this moment in time. Dissolve parliament. All of you go home. Yes, we all go home. How are we encouraging other people who might have new and creative ideas? Young people who are making money without any government help. They are just buying their own bundles. They are going on TikTok and making money. KRA is coming after them. Mm. I've been in parliament for 15 years. We have been unable to pass the gender law. And yet no presidential candidate is talking about it now. Because we are fake. The truth is all the men refuse to vote for that law. What did Sonko do to Pumwani from Maternity Hospital? Yeah, he with cleaned his it up. own money. Cleaned it with his own, own money. money. That was him as an individual. Yeah. Uh -huh. And I did not say he was cleaning his own money. I was saying he was cleaning. He cleaned his <laughs> foot, mouth, foot, mouth. Eric. <laughs> okay. The Situation Room, Kenya's biggest conversation. It's raining in the capital, 18 degrees, highs of 23 and lows of 15 today. Partly sunny conditions in Nakuru at 19, highs of 25. 22 will be the high in Nyeri where it's raining as well at 18, coming down to lows of 14. It's mostly sunny in Eldor right now at 19, highs of 24 and lows of 14. We're looking at sunny conditions, or actually rainy conditions in Mombasa at 29, highs of 31. And in Malindi, it's raining as well at 29. It'll go to highs of 30. Kisumu is sunny at 24. We'll see highs of 28, while Kakamega is sunny at 24 as well. We'll see highs of 29 and lows of 17. In Kampala, the rain continues at 23, highs of 27, and at 27, it's raining in Dar es Salaam to go to highs of 30 today. <clears throat> Mostly cloudy conditions in Johannesburg, going to highs of 26 and lows of 15. It's partly sunny at 26 in Lagos, highs of 33. In Kinshasa, it's sunny at 23, highs of 31. 3 degrees in Beijing, highs of 5 and lows of minus 4. Paris at 7 is cloudy, highs of 9 and lows of 6. We're looking at cloudy conditions at 12 in London. 12 with high and lows of 12. 6 degrees and clear in New York. Highs of 11, back down to lows of 6. Welcome to Spice FM, the best exclusive radio station bringing you the best mix of the best music ever. All right, we should be out of traffic hour now, but I guess the roads did not get that memo. Jogo Road, uh, still heavy as we're looking at Uhuru Highway, which a lot of these roads are feeding onto. Haile Selassie, Ngong Road, uh, Valley Road, and then the Thika Super Highway coming into the city. Still some traffic around most parts. The rain uh, slows things down considerably, but we should be able to handle it now moving forward into most parts of mid-morning. Let's talk through the day on Spice FMKE on Twitter. Text for 0127. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. uh -huh. 14 days trial uh -huh. you select whatever package you'd like to try uh -huh. if it's Showmax mobile 300 shillings Showmax 760 shillings Showmax Pro mobile 1050 Showmax Pro 2100 uh -huh. you get 14 days trial 
Uh -huh. Free. Uh -huh. When you finish, it asks you so now. You've, do you like it? Do you want to pay? Like it? That's a point when you can. And you can pay via M-Pesa. Or you can choose any other uh, uh, payment method. That includes a debit card. So you just insert, put your card and then it debits your card. Or M-Pesa, you send the money and that's how you'll be renewing your subscription. Simple. ABC. www.showmax.com. 20 minutes to 10. Spice FM. Spice up your life. Mature, intelligent talk every morning. Spice up yourself. Okay, so the conversation continues. This is with regards to justice. Now that the matter is now being prosecuted in the court of public opinion, Let's expand it further and say, so this same court of public opinion is the one that has a vote. Yep. Mm. We have talked about it many times. Oh, you know, we have a constitution. It's called the Leadership and Integrity Chapter 6 of the Constitution. That one is brought to life by the Leadership and Integrity Act. Members of Parliament, when they were discussing this, they decided, aha, what we're going to do is we're going to make it a bit difficult for us to be locked out of participating. So the law, as it says, is... Even if you're facing a, ch a case in court, until you've exhausted all avenues of appeal, now this goes all the way to the Supreme Court, until you've exhausted all avenues of appeal, you cannot be barred from contesting for an electoral post. And this is just pure, basic justice. Because you also have a right to fair administrative justice. Mm. Until it has been concluded and you have been found, yes, 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 indeed, you are somebody who ought to be punished and your appeal has failed and all, then that's the point when you said, we cannot then allow you. Or if you've actually been jailed and you've gone in, you've served a sentence that exceeds six months, then there already we're in jail. But this is a law. The conversation then has gone on to Pe members of the public saying, no, 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 we should not allow, we should not allow. Major Aluke, the MP for where? Sirisia. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. Was convicted by a high court, competent court with proper jurisdiction in the Republic of Kenya, and he was called a fraudster by the court. Yes, and sentenced. And he was sentenced. And the fine was hefty. Major right. Aluke did what? Appealed. He is still serving. As a member of parliament, mm. he could not lose his seat because he has not exhausted all avenues of appeal. Now, people have been saying, oh, this person should not be allowed to come back to the ballot in next year's general election. What stops him? The law doesn't. No, the law doesn't. This is the point. The law is being applied. Mm. And when it's applied, this is what it presents you with. The point is, though, that nobody can take you to court for refusing to vote for him. No. No. Nobody can accuse you of anything if you voted for another candidate apart from this one that you do not want. So, if you're going to put your opinions then and you're going to inject some kind of life to your opinions, what you should do then, because all other avenues you cannot use in terms of the law, mm. those avenues you cannot use, what you should do then is put your opinions to life by refusing to give this individual an opportunity to serve as member of parliament or governor of whatever. Mm. That's the only way now that you can give life to these things. Everything else, according to you, is just hot air. You can talk from here until tomorrow. But if you're not actually injecting life into it by making a decision when it comes to time about what this individual has done, then you're not saying anything. Yep. But you having been repeating this action over time, giving them this opportunity five years later, because with these things we've heard about individual like Baba Wino, for example, didn't start yesterday. Neither did they start with this incident of the shooting. They have been there. People have been talking the about them for the longest time. The notoriety has been in the public yeah. domain. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So if it is true that the people who is, you know, who's got jurisdiction over are not happy with this kind of behavior, then we would have seen somebody else occupying that seat. Are you then saying that the people who voted him in were not privy to all these things that were in the public they domain? Definitely they definitely were. They were. They made all considerations. Yes. So, the league, the, 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 well, the next step that we're discussing uh. 
is how then do people utilize this same power? Because it's that power of the vote that takes our members of parliament to the point where they be actually become members of parliament. Mm. Mm. From aspirant to member of parliament. To governor, to, to president. Go yes, exactly. So this power, are people willing to either continue subjugating this power to what they think would serve a short-term interest, or are they definitely cognizant of that power and are able to, before even the election, mm. call somebody out and say, excuse me, so-and-so, come. We don't like this, we don't like this, we don't like this. Mm. And if you do not... We will, will not. We will yes. not. Yes. Yeah. Are they willing to? Let's because ask the people. 0719-012600, Lydia is on the line. Good morning. Uh, good morning, Spice FM. Thank you for your good discussion. It gives us brains to think. Now, all those who ha have court cases, they should not be voted for. Mm. Babu, you know, for so many years, even since he was a student at the university, he would cause demonstrations and the routers, uh, looters and robbers would break into shops to do their own work, mm. not Babu Owino's. So Babu Owino should not be voted for again. He only causes businesses to be uh, robbed and looted by these uh, demonstrators. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Spice FM. Politicians with court cases should not be uh, voted for again. Mm -hmm. okay. We are the ones to blame for voting wrongly. Yeah. Thank you. Thank Spice you. FM. Thank, Thank you, you, Lydia. The question, as Lydia has put it, politicians with court cases, should they be voted for by their voters? <laughs> and someone will come and tell you, you know, what we're going to do vita. You know. Trumped up charges. Yeah. You're taken to court just so that the people are told, you see, he has a court case. Why are you voting for him? Why are you voting for her? She has a court case. Right. Uh, Justice Mumbe Ngoke, mm. I think, is the is the is the individual with the closest ruling or judgment on something like this. When in that ruling, she said that you should not be able to hold public office when you have a, a case of this manner against you, corruption, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now, in terms of how that would have been interpreted, is what brought a lot of confusion. Mm. Okay, so how are we going to do this? What do we mean that you can uh, hold files in your home? Must you not come to a physical office? What exactly must you do? Mm. But we have to. Again, it comes to the realization that she cannot change the law. She it is not her responsibility. Mm. Neither does she have uh, the prerogative of you can't. She can't do that. She can give a suggestion. Anybody can give a suggestion. But it sits. It, it's obvious now that it sits in the minds of those who then are interpreting the law as mm. the judiciary. It sits in their mind that hold on, this should not be the case. That we have these cases coming to us on a regular basis. If there was something that we could do. Mm to make sure that we don't have them coming to us again, stop it. If you have a case like that and your name is here, public office now when you represent the people mm -hmm. with something that has besmirched your image, you should not be able to hold that office. Kurye Nyeri, good morning. Morning, guys. How are you? Fine, Fine you. thanks. Oh, good, good. You know there's a proverb. I don't know why Modimo has not used it. That phrase in my native language, Gimayu mm -hmm. mm -hmm. meaning Ugali comes from the flower. Uh -huh. The flower is the maize flower. Mm. The question is this. Even in your today's day, you have to in the study that some people in the school are complaining and saying... Your line, your line, your line, courier, please call again. Your line has issues. It's not clear. Antonin Kisumu. Good morning, Eric and Du and uh, Kitty. Good, Good morning. Good morning, sir. Uh, the standards you set on ethics in our country are appalling. Mm. Mm. They are too low to the extent that uh, even the law themselves are uh, obnoxious. Mm. <laughs> How can you say until somebody exhausts? And chapter 6 clearly says on integrity. It's our constitution. If we can't leave the letter and spirit of the constitution, uh. then I think the bar we set, I think, is uh, suit suitable for us because I can't get the leaders it deserves. Uh -huh. I don't blame the judiciary. I don't blame the electoral system. I blame Mui Kenyans, mm. who, despite knowing all well that this person has integrity issues, we still go ahead and vote them and expect miracles to happen. Probably that they'll change when they go to the August house mm. or whichever house they're elected to. Mm. If somebody is a crook, no matter which seat he sits on, he's still crooked in mind, thought, spirit, and everything. Mm. So whatever the judiciary did is in law, but we should come up as Kenyan and say standards of ethics in leadership should be at this level. Mm. Nothing 
below below that. We don't say that we should ever be on like Caesar's wife type of leader beyond reproach because they're human beings mm. in the current world. But allowing some extreme like uh, with the murder cases, with the corruption, being elected again, it just, we've set it too low. We are the ones who have lowered the bar. It's us, okay. the electorate. It's not the system. Thank it's you. Us who allow, if the law says we can be acquitted wherever, and it's in law, nothing wrong has been done by the judicial system, mm. then it's us to say, at the ballot, no, you have this and this and this, and it's in it was just a suspicion that he did it. He mm. even admitted it, I think, of 5 FM, and mm. said ready to go to wherever when uh, convicted. Yep. So if somebody is ready to go to jail when convicted, does it still remain a suspicion? Mm. Yep. So we should just come out next year. If I was a voter in Embakasi or in uh, Lucas Place in this year, I would have gone for a better person. But unfortunately, I'm a voter in Kisumu, so I'll go still. For better person. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Anthony. It's who has ra who raises and lowers the bar? Well, let me ask the question. It's a society that does it. Eh? Yes, it does. But um, are you then saying that we, uh, we have this unique society in Kenya mm. that charts a way forward and it doesn't follow uh, a time-honored tradition of simply following your leader? You think that song, Follow the Little Leader, was for nothing? Mm. No. People follow. And when you are thinking with your stomach and you're thinking with your survival instincts, some of these things become an academic subject. So he did what exactly? Mm. Oh, he, okay. he's a thug. Mm. Uh, so uh, who isn't a thug? Mm. Uh, <laughs> yes. So uh, he's a politician. Yeah. Mm. But... Uh, were we yeah, elected? He, uh, he asked, what of viewers are these stolen? Yes, exactly. And also, so <laughs> wait, uh, what are we discussing? The election of a bishop or the election of a politician? Mm. Okay, politician. So these standards we are setting, well, since when do we have these standards for politicians? Now, so long as it's a free for all, and that's why I said victim. Mm. If somebody is brought up in a setup such as this one, you set up as a student leader, and student leadership requires you to be loud, abrasive, obnoxious, what do you think you are going to become when you become a little older, you actually manage to graduate, you get a job, and then you convince people in your neck of the woods that you would make a good leader? What are the things that you do? There are the things that you may do in terms of so-called development mm -hmm. projects, but there is what you say and what the public wants to hear. Notoriety for some people is a badge of honor. Mm. So... You may actually find, if you go to Mbakasi East, and uh, I think we actually even got a caller here from Mbakasi East, who says, this man, in terms of representation of these people, he's done well. Yes, so? In terms of utilization of CDF and in engaging the public, and in yes. the, 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 the people who will say, ah, yes. we, the people of Mbakasi East, have absolutely no problem. We have no he problem. has done well. Yes, so? So all these other things that he has done are in addition to the job that we gave him. Hmm. He has done well. Now, does that... Does that does whatever else he does there affect what he's doing for us? No. The job that we give him in a Kenyan setup, no, <laughs> it doesn't. You see that, and that's the thing now in Kenyan setup. Yes, in a Kenyan we setup, we explain, yeah. we we seek for ways to explain away something. Yes, okay. Whether it's good or bad, yes. somebody comes in late. They have actually walked in. Late. You've been waiting for them for an hour. I understand this Mombasa mm. road. I know I get yeah, it. I get traffic it. By us, but, but it's always there every day. But, yeah, yeah. We've planned at, better for it. They always come in late and yeah. you always explain them away. For them. Your children burn schools left, right and center. But you know, the, our children, you know, there's something they're saying. You know, our children are more exposed than we were when we were young. You know, they have are. access to information. <laughs> you know, you, you, you know, these children, you have to treat them different. No, you don't. No, you don't have to treat them differently. No. No, 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 no. no. We explain away things. So uh, the, somebody has, has been taken to court and then you start saying, but you see, you see this person, if you look at the, the person that he supports at the national level, he's on this other side. All the people who have cases in court, right, are people on this side. Yes. And so it means these people are being picked on. These people and are being also, picked on. Hmm? there is this small matter of the stadia that was supposed to have been built in the first five years of the Jubilee government. Mm. That's okay. Yeah. But now, now. Mm. You see, there, was, there, were, there were challenges at that point, okay? So, um, I mean, uh, it, it required planning. And then after planning, now when implementation was supposed to take place, COVID. Mm. 
Okay. And surely, just when we were poised to set this thing out, there was a handshake. Mm. Mm. What could you have It, it disrupted everything that had been planned. Mm. You know, it has become part, of, not just of our national discourse, it's part of our national ethos. Mm. We explain, as you correctly put it, we not only explain things away, but we find new ways of explaining things away. Justify bad behavior. Yes. Actually, yes. Justify things that border on and actually uh, have their existence in the criminal. Yes. And say, essentially, that it is all right to behave in a certain way so long as you can give a reason for it. And I think it's about time that you actually, you can be bold enough to say that it is wrong. Now, saying it's wrong doesn't now mean that, uh, uh, saying it's wrong doesn't now mean that because it's wrong, everybody stops me. Because bad habits have been acquired over time. And they say it takes a longer time to shed a bad habit. But I think coming to the realization that it exists and you must do something about it is where we're still a far cry from. Mm. Then, because we've mm. not taken, you don't take the responsibility to say, you know what, guys, however way you want to twist it, however way you want to explain it away, bad behavior is bad behavior. It should be dealt with. Do consider the narrative that we always hear of. And this comes really from politicians mm. and, and their allies. So and so is being picked on because mm. so and so. You forget that they may have done something that that becomes mm -hmm. an issue. Yep, they are being picked on. Where did this narrative of the judiciary is a bottleneck <laughs> to issues in Kenya? Mm. Super. Where do you think that narrative came from? Mm. Hmm? Why and who was propagating that particular narrative? Mm. Who was pushing that particular agenda? Right. When we look at the performance of our police and the service that they provide for the public, mm. how often do we hear discussions of the good things, and there are many that they actually do? Mm. We focus on a few individuals and the crimes that they have committed and the evil they have perpetrated, and that becomes our discourse about the police service. This jaundiced view of always looking thing, at, at things in a way that serves a certain purpose and leads us in the direction that we've actually chosen mm. is part of our national discourse. Mm. It's the way we are. It's the way we are inclined. And Eric, you are right. When we look at, say, the, what is happening in the schools, yes, there is always room for a discussion of why it happened. But the larger discussion is it has happened. And because it has happened, it must be dealt with. Mm. The reason why things are taken to court is so that the why can be understood. Mm. But for the time being, you commit, something is attributed to you. There's an immediate action that ought to be taken. Mm. When it's taken, then we can now go to the why. Even people who are seen in broad daylight committing a crime, you shoot someone, you kill someone, you're taken to court. Why? It's so that we understand the why. Mm. So when we talk about leadership. You see, the burning of schools becomes a pertinent point of discussion because mm. it's telling us about the future and we're looking at it straight in the eye. These are indeed the leaders of tomorrow. These individuals who are very quietly and very purposefully burning down things. These are the ones. They are the ones. Mm. They are the ones. So thank you very much for tuning in to Kenya's biggest conversation today. City Muga has the day's proverb. When you're shocker, Hakosi kuni. When you kibiriti hakosi moto. When you choose and you have the right implement for the right purpose, you will be able to achieve what you intended to do. It's as simple as that. Mm -hmm. But so long as our intentions are vague and our purpose is misguided, it doesn't really matter how hard we try. We'll actually not get to what we want. Mm -hmm. Yes. But what we do achieve in the process, we talk a great deal. Mm -hmm. Yes, that we manage to achieve very successfully. What favors the prepared? Fortune favors mm. the prepared. You have to be prepared. You've got to be ready. And it's use right. what you have. And use what you have. Thank you for tuning in to Kenya's Biggest Conversation. Tomorrow is Justice Thursdays and we'll have a conversation uh, on Justice Thursdays again because we always have this on Thursdays. And uh, let me just tell you shortly who will be joining us. The person who will be joining us tomorrow is uh, the Honorable Abdul Qadir Lorot. He is the Chief Magistrate and Chairperson of the National Council on Administration of Justice Special Committee on Court Users Committees. So it's who are court users, who are the court users committees, and uh, what do they do? 
or the people who use the courts. Yeah? So the chair of the Court Users Committees will be joining us tomorrow. Kenya's biggest conversation. Thank you very much for tuning in. Um, we'll be here from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. Now until 11, music. 11 until 2 p.m., Yolanda and DJ Absolute. And then Quatch will be here from 3 to 5 on... Uh, seven. Oh, 7. 3 to 7. I said 5. You did. Why? 3 to 7. And then the adults in the room will be here from 7. Good morning. It's 10 a.m. Spice up your life. The latest news from around the